and invite to, you to join us to the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Again, we'd like to uh, welcome this evening uh, Guillermo Salazar as an uh, alternate to the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission. There's a gentleman to the last seat on the right, and uh, he'll be here for a few years. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, hopefully. Uh, in case of fire, there are two ways to exit the council chambers. To my left, you exit through the council chamber doors, turn left, walk down a flight of stairs, and out of the building. Or the, perhaps the best exit is to the rear of the chambers. In either case, once you're outside of the building, please walk a safe distance away from the building. Will the secretary please take the roll? Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis, absent. Um, Virginia Higley. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Liz Ballard, absent. Mary Scott, late. <laughs> Linda DeGray. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. Richard Suzak is here. Alternates uh, DeGray and Gruber will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. Approval of minutes. You have uh, minutes of July 6. Any additions, errors, or omissions? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of July 6, 2017. Second. second. Motion's made, seconded. Discussion? Any errors, <coughs> omissions, omissions? Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess it's, I don't know, my grammar coming, you know, teacher part of me coming out. But, um, on page four, second paragraph down, one, two, three, fourth sentence. Instead of track, should be truck. Um, second to the last sentence in that, Coca-Cola is not spelled Coke-A-Cola. <laughs> it is a trademark. Um, paragraph so underneath hard. that, the M in Manning Road should be capitalized. And one, two, then... I was very confused the way it was written. It didn't make a lot of sense. I had to keep rereading it, trying to figure out what it was. And I'm thinking five or 10 years from now, if somebody wanted to read these minutes, it would be very difficult. So that's me. And then page five, <laughs> second paragraph. One, two, three, four, five, six sentence down. It should be bus stop instead of top. And in the sentence just before that, he stated that in the fall, I think we should name who he was in that sentence. Again, we don't know who's going to be reading these. Um, then on page eight, second paragraph up from the bottom should be tractor track tours, not trackers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then page nine, bottom paragraph, one, two, three, fourth line up should be trucks, not rucks. <laughs> um, Spell truck doesn't get all these. No, I mean, they're real words. So I, I kind of was like, okay. And then on page 12, um, just be above directors of planning report, it says Director O'Brien provided an attaboy for diligent efforts for blight officers as they have logged removal of removal from the property. We don't know what property, so it was kind of again, kind of left me. And it's these go back to June, so I don't have a great memory. And then on page 15 is. Capital G, not a small G, in DeGray. And I think that's me. <laughs> Sorry. 
Guess I didn't need to read it. You got them all. I got them all. <laughs> did you get page eight? Did you did that? Uh, page eight. Yeah. I, I might not have. One, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs down. Last sentence in that paragraph. It, it's uh, condition eleven is about trackers with semi trailers. Yes, I did get that okay. one. Yes. So. The only, the only comment I have, and I've brought it up before, it is absolutely necessary, and particularly the reason uh, of these minutes. On uh, page three, uh, at the top, the uh, motion was made by Mary Scott and then seconded by Commissioner Ladd and then the vote. You've got to list, especially when you have a negative or an abstention, You've got to list the people who vote and how they voted. Absolutely. So, and I, I don't remember how they voted, but uh, you've got to do that. Anyone else? No. Okay. All in favor has amended. Unanimous. Uh, Guillermo can't vote. Um, I, abst I abstained. He can't vote only because he wasn't here. Right. Right. I wasn't here also, so I would abstain. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I haven't seated him because I. I right. Okay, so we got one, yeah. two, three, four. These go five, back to four, July. Two abstentions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, five, yes. who, who's abstained? Sarah. I abstained. I was Sarah. not here. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah that's one. And, and I haven't seated him. Oh. Okay. All right. So he's because still got he's five. brand new. If he wants to, I'll seat him. But I. No. no, perfectly fine. It's going to be. Okay. Well. <laughs> but he wasn't here, so he has to abstain. Oh, okay. The only time, um, well, we haven't had a time to sit to sit with people, but you, uh, unless the alternates are seated, they cannot vote. Oh. And uh, also, I they can participate seated. in any hearing. Like, even now, he can participate if he so desires. Because he is, he's a member, but unless he's seated, he cannot vote. Okay. Okay. Uh, now with that little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Got that okay. Done. At this point of the meeting, we welcome comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who's present. Provided you may not discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the commission, or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address the commission under those conditions? Anyone would like to address the commission under those conditions? Last call to address the commission this evening under those conditions. Hearing none, we'll move along. Bond release. This is uh, SPR 1671, 1559 King Street. What you desire, ladies and gentlemen, I can't make a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion um, for the site plan review 1672 Baker Properties Limited Partnership, 1559 King Street, Enfield, Connecticut, map 17, lot 39, releasing of landscaping bond in the amount of $13,100. Whereas the Town of Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission has reviewed the request for the release of the landscaping bond in the amount of $13,100 for the property located at 1559 King Street, Map 17, Lot 39, Owner, Baker Properties Limited Partnership. And whereas the landscaping requirements approved under Site Plan Review 1671 have been established on a property for over one year, and whereas the site has been inspected by the Planning Department staff and the applicant has been found to have fulfilled their responsibility for the landscaping requirements. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby approves the release of the landscaping bond in the amount of $13,100 to Baker Properties Limited Partnership for the property located at 1559 King Street, Enfield, Connecticut. Second that. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Yes, I have a question on the title lines up there. It says the amount is $24,750. Is there a Little error there. Yeah. The 
top of the page. Yeah, I, I, the resolution. I, I, I sort of changed that to thirteen thousand one hundred dollars. Yeah, I want to make sure we got the right amount here. <laughs> I think that thirteen is right. But here it is. Maybe you got a different. Uh, oh, let's see. Oh, Go the the next page. oh, yeah. Okay, you got the resolution. What is the amount in Rick's memo? That's, then I would go with 13. 13, 100. Right. Okay. That's the one that uh, Rick is, uh, Rich is okayed. And it's, a, it's the same in the main body of the uh, resolution. The only place it's <coughs> not is up, up above in the title. The title block. Okay. okay. Any, any further questions? No. Hearing none, all in favor of the release. Which is the unanimous 600. Zero zero. 600, zero zero, yeah. Okay. Public hearing continued. Public hearing 2874, 53 Manning Road. Again, uh, Commissioners DeGray and Gruber will be sitting in. And uh, this is Rich, take the, take the roll. Charles Dern. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Nick Lefakis, absent. Virginia Higley. Here. Elizabeth Ballard, absent. Mary Scott is absent. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Okay. The applicants are here. Uh, just as a start, I'll reference a letter that is uh, all commissioners have received. It's uh, from Kevin Hertz of 23 Manning Road concerning 53 Manning Road. And it was received in the office October 19th and uh, at 516. And uh, as I said, each commissioner has it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Attorney Thomas Fahey, representing the applicant, Chip Labonte, who's present and sitting in the second row there. Uh, Kevin Shea is our architect, <coughs> and Jim Bernardino is our uh, civil engineer. And, and the senior uh, Mr. Labonte. And the senior Mr. Labonte is, there he is in the back. <laughs> uh, we uh, just need a second. We have a, a PowerPoint uh, presentation uh, which was set up earlier. We need to get the screen and someone know how to hit the button. They tried to do what they did before, is not ever come and do it off the tapes and told us to do it. So she has to come to the news. Mr. Chairman, while they're doing that, the, uh, the list of department comments was updated this afternoon, and the fire marshal has indicated that his concerns have been satisfied. All right, because I was going to announce that we I had no no new items from any of the people that we require them from did receive uh, the uh, report from the fire marshal this afternoon um, and the concerns that he had it, uh, raised with respect to the earlier uh, plans uh, have been addressed. How about poli uh, police and engineering? Um, I believe that Raquel gave you the latest. Uh, huh? No, they, neither one of them commented. No comments? Yeah, that's a note I had down that, uh, well, it's up to the commission, but I'd like to continue the, until we I, get Yeah, I think comments. the uh, the issues, you know, this has been before the commission on a number of times, and the issues were mainly planning um, and um, fire marshal. And, and we'll uh, see what the commission decides, because we've always required them from the, at least the three of them. Sorry, Attorney Fahey. Thank you. Uh, the, um, as you know, this uh, application started uh, quite some time ago. Is this coming through okay? 
it's not as loud as it could be, so I, I don't know if it has to do with our... It says it's on. Okay. We can hear you. I you just wonder whether the okay. audience can hear you. Am I heard back there? Roger wasn't very loud. Okay. And um, uh, the application uh, was submitted several months ago, and we've worked very closely with uh, the town planning staff, uh, had several reviews, and as the commission knows, we've submitted plans which we've revised on uh, two occasions now, uh, hoping to address the comments which were uh, obvious to us from, uh, from hearing the commission's deliberations on previous sets of plans. That, uh, and we think we've addressed all the issues that uh, were of concern in a way that should be hopefully very favorable to you. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the three different uh, reports that we submitted in response to that in the, uh, that um, addressed the staff comments, but I'm going to deal, deal with it hopefully in a little more broad fashion. And uh, I'm going to use the uh, PowerPoint uh, to kind of focus on and show you what we're doing uh, it, 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 that just shows and is connected to the comments that we've already made and as you can see uh, <clears throat> uh, the, uh, the building is here on the, on the cover sheet uh, essentially showing the view from the uh, east that be the eastern uh, from the eastern boarding looking west um, and uh, that's a visual depiction uh, and um, the um, other slides will show how we're addressing the comment uh, that the commission had and concern regarding the uh, the easternmost par parking lot. This is an aerial view of the uh, of the property. Um, as as y'all know, 53 Manning Road uh, was occupied for years by the Hallmark Company. I think back in the 60s, the building was built in '66. And at one time, they had uh, three, uh, three shifts of people operating 24 hours a day. It was a, a distribution center for them. And uh, our client, uh, Mr. Levante, uh, bought the uh, property within the last uh, six or seven years, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. And um, has been uh, trying to uh, uh, Retenant the building and it has so far uh, two tenants, uh, principal tenants, uh, occupying about half the building. Uh, one is Brooks Brothers, and it's Brooks Brothers. They don't uh, uh, store their merchandise there. They store fixtures that they use in their stores. You know, decorative like uh, maybe shelving or displays or maybe Christmas trees for Christmas or seasonal things. So they don't really have a lot of uh, day in and day out traffic because they only need to go someplace if there's a new store being fitted up in the area that this serves. So it's quite a bit different than if it was a, a merchandise center, uh, regularly moving merchandise. The other tenant is a, is a kind of a, a boutique -y, uh, I think, um, in, uh, uh, either Swedish or uh, a, a firm that has a certain kind of a boutique beer uh, that they distribute in small quantities uh, uh, that uh, into shops that deal in specialty beers. Um, and uh, the other 150,000 square feet is, um, you know, plus or minus is what we're trying to fill up with uh, climate control self storage, which will be located in the southern part of the building. Go ahead. And this, this little video is uh, uh, a couple of minutes, which is going to show you how the interior of the building operates as how the, the storage bins are located and what it's going to look like um, when it's completed. This is based upon a, an, another uh, self-storage facility, which is going to be very similar to the one we intend to implement. And um, there's a little, the office, uh, you know, kitchen area. And that just shows you there's, uh, quite a few safety uh, and uh, security features inside uh, the building. There's an example of a bin corrugated and wire mesh ceilings, so it makes it very easy for if there ever is a fire or something, the sprinklers can get down it very quickly. There's a series of the bins.
There's uh, some dollies that uh, the cu customers can use to wheel their uh, material to the individual bin. <coughs> There's the uh, exterior. <coughs> okay, now we're back to um, the uh, facility itself. This is uh, looking west. Uh, and you'll see how the, there are actually two levels to the building uh, and they're taking advantage of the grade. And there's a series of, um, of doors uh, and um, uh, the uh, doors may or, may or may not be used depending upon the need. Uh, the, uh, and, um, but these, uh, the, pur the purpose here is to show you how they function how the trucks access them. Now this is uh, this is the buffer. Um, now this is along the I believe this is the eastern border, correct? And uh, currently it's been used. There's 104 parking spaces there, and uh, as you know from the last submission, um, uh, along the this is along the border, which is along the residential property. The arborvitae trees there are 20 feet or so high. They they're very very thick and densely grown. But over the years, as, as some of the members of public have said at previous meetings, apparently this has uh, one time been a source of consternation with truck noise and uh, trucks idling and things of that nature. I think I've heard it's gotten better because of uh, the police enforcement due to s proper signage and whatnot. But there was an issue as to uh, when you're getting a special permit like we are for a new use as how do we satisfy the buffer requirement. And uh, I know the members of the commission were concerned about having it look green, um, and uh, as buffers do. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to a lawn area. Uh, and so it, it not, and it, the parking spaces are going away. The access to this parking lot was also a, a curb cut, right. and um, that's being eliminated, and that's being landscaped over, so you won't be able to access any of this area from uh, Manning Road. Uh, you have to use one of the other accesses further west. Uh, so um, that, and, and that change is noted on, on the plans, which are also in here, we'll show you in a second. Okay, this is the vegetative screen along the north, north side, and this is the existing vegetative screen, which is being supplemented, and you'll see the supplemented with, and you, if you've seen the plans, you've seen the additional uh, trees and uh, types of shrubs that we've planted to supplement this uh, border on the north side, which is also residential. Um, again, that's another shot of the east property line from the other direction looking, uh, looking east. Um, and uh, this is the south side. Uh, now, uh, south side of the building, so as you're coming uh, uh, down Manning Road, the purpose of this is to show where there's going to be a new entry. That's what's highlighted in red. And this is going to be an entry feature. Um, and actually, I brought some sam samples of the exterior, which is in hand. Do you want me to go through? Let's see, you're coming on that one. Do you want these? Dunkin' Donuts. It's, this is quite a quite typical and common color and material to, that store uh, you'll see with a self storage facility. And here's um, fabric. the fabric, uh, the fabric we used whatnot. That would be here at the uh, the awning. And the the awnings that you see there, the blue and I guess you'd say brown or orange gold. Uh, the, that the previous slide is the fabric that'll be on the on the awnings. Right there, it is right there in the circle. Too fast. Too fast. You want to go back? Yeah. Sorry, sir. Okay. There it is. There. 
Which the now? Which one are you talking about? The that's one that, the, the one that outlined in the red. The two that are outlined, yeah. The the blue and the gold. That matches this. That matches the uh, this uh, previous slide. Our copies that were given to us, everything was black. <laughs> yeah. Which doesn't help much. Yeah. <laughs> you should get a color. I should get a color printer. Oh, wait, right. Uh, this is a t the uh, again well, more detail on the interior configuration, the, the wire mesh ceiling, and the uh, the typical overhead door that uh, you would use on on the uh, unit. That's the more, that's the metal you just got. The metal that I gave you was this is this is the sample from that particular uh, manufacturer of the metal finishes. All right, now we're into the actual uh, uh, special permit. The, this is exactly what we submitted to you. The, the combined sheet of um, of uh, both the engineering and the architectural drawings, with all the information on it, including the title sheet, the way that your specific regulations require it to be. And uh, this this is again the tr treating the buffer, showing you where that's on the right side, the shaded area. Uh, that's where you're going to see the. Um, uh, the uh, conversion of the uh, parking lot and the elimination of the parking spaces and the creation of the 100-foot buffer to comply with your regulation and conversion, converting it to a green lawn. Uh, here we're showing, is this the, uh, I can't read that in the back there. What are we? Oh, this is the uh, erosion control plan showing compliance with uh, with that it's the work at the new entry this is this is just showing the new entry which we showed you when pictorially described and this is uh, what's going to be doing uh, going to be done to that these show basically the, the very few modifications we're making to the existing structure what's that this is the truck circulation. oh yeah this uh, now the other thing that we did um, is in a previous iteration of this plan we had proposed some exterior storage for like campers uh, and um, you know uh, vehicles if you will and um, we've eliminated that completely we're not asking for permission to do that uh, and uh, that would have been done in the lower parking lot so um, that's gone and this simply shows how, how delivery trucks uh, circulate it's a requirement for any regulation, and this is the sheet that shows that. Standard details. This is standard details that um, explain uh, other requirements of your uh, site planning requirements. Yeah, this is plantings. These are plantings uh, to on the shaded portion here are additional plantings to the northern border. Uh, you, if you recall the picture, you saw the existing very nice. Uh, Tree, tree buffer there, and these are additional plantings to enhance that for the street that's to the to the north. Uh, that the backyards of those houses have now an additional buffer to what they already have. And where are we? What's that now? Parking layout, I think. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the original survey. Like existing conditions. This is, yeah. just, this is the existing existing conditions, conditions, which is just a requirement. Okay. This is just showing the demo, which is very modest. Yeah, again, this the only purpose of this one is certain things, you have to, you have to a certain amount of things on the existing facility inside have to be demoed to, to allow us to build the facility the way we showed it to you in the previous uh, slides. So it shows the proposed storage and floor plan. Yeah. The other thing to say about the Florida Storm Plans, if you remember the, one of the previous iterations, we had an area for automobiles, for motor vehicles. That's been eliminated completely. We're no, there's not going to be any automobiles stored in, in this facility. Uh, so that eliminates concerns of, you know, that the Commission ex, uh, expressed con possible leakage of things that, uh, uh, that are for vehicles that are stored in these bins. So. We, we decided not to pursue that. Primarily, these bins are going to be used for uh, storage of uh, home furnishings, um, people moving that need places temporarily to store this stuff, uh, office supplies, 
things of that nature, and things that need to be that that uh, uh, that are will benefit by it being in a climate controlled environment. It also shows the business where the business office is going to be, um, where you sign up and your contract and things of that nature, and talk to the manager if you have an issue or concern, and the self and the the self storage new entry location. This is the uh, the second. This shows the existing second floor, um, and um, uh, there was uh, uh, this has received uh, uh, a lot of revision, particularly with respect to the uh, uh, access, uh, fire access, and fire emergency access, and and the um, you'll see at the bottom there's a picture of the. Uh, uh, the exterior fire escape, which is now a regular staircase, uh, which wasn't existing in the initial set of plans and has since been uh, uh, proposed here. It'll look simply to that, look something like this. Yeah, those are examples. The examples of uh, what we're going to uh, install. Yeah, um, yeah. It's hard. To, it's kind of the scale is. It's hard to picture um, on that drawing. That's why we showed you the pictures earlier. It's, it's such a small scale. You don't really get a good feel of the elevation looking at it in two dimensional. That's the end. Okay. So that's that's the. Um, the end of our. Uh, Could you just go back and show those fire escapes again? Yes. I think. Just the typical. The other one. The other one. Back four. You yeah. had the one that goes to the second floor. There you go. That image. Yeah. I mean, these are these are typical images for representation. Right. We haven't built, but this. Well, I mean, typical. that was the issue originally. There was none at all, and then there was a ladder going up, and so now we've got a, a stair, and I think that's just important that that, that be part of the record. Right. Yep. And it's approximately six feet from the roof to grade at the northeast exit off the roof. Now I want to um, I wanted to address um, some of the special permit criteria for the record. Uh, as you know, in, in an authorizing special permit, you have to take into consideration the self health, self health, safety, and welfare concerns um, for the public, and um, and you you have basically four criteria. One is uh, the extent to which that it complies with the specific criteria in, uh, in Article 6, which is the Article 6 sets forth your industrial um, uses, and um, some of those uses have a specific criteria. And I, and I think that most of the criteria is really compliance with the site plan regulations. Uh, for, for example, uh, a good example would be right here with the fire code. Uh, the initial year review, uh, the commission wasn't satisfied planning with, with what the fire um, uh, plan was for compliance with safety, if you will. And we've amended that. Um, ex what I think is in compliance with what your desire was, was to have a much better fire escape system for pe people up there. And that, ad we feel, addresses um, the concern uh, for safety, uh, which is part of uh, uh, the sp special permit criteria. Uh, and number two, that says all proposed structures and equipment and materials should be ready accessible for fire and police protection. Um, in terms of the item three, which is that the proposed use should be of such location, size, and character that in general will be in harmony with the appropriate orderly development of the district in which it is proposed to be situated will not be detrimental to the orderly development of adjacent properties. I think the commission um, put a lot of attention into improving the um, uh, quality, quality of life type issues 
as best they can when you have industrial property which is zoned for all the uses that are in that industrial table that happens to be adjacent to um, residential zones. And I think a lot, a lot of that, uh, the way we've addressed that is there already is an existing uh, uh, site barrier with the 20-foot-plus uh, arborvitaes. Now there's going to be a 100-foot barrier, which you're not going to be able to park on, you're not going to have access to, and it's going to be lawn. Um, and, um, and more importantly, uh, these, um, this self-storage use um, that with the, the uh, storage bins that we have uh, generally is used, uh, is used in access by people who have but by their own cars or pickup trucks as opposed to semis because the the size of the units are are are, um, are usually small uh, a lot of times they're used for short-term needs could be six months could be two years whatever but it, it's not like a uh, um, distribution center which um, uh, has a lot of open space and stacks high uh, which is uh, in distributing on a regular basis, such as the previous years of Hallmark. So not only is there less traffic, uh, less traffic because um, for industrial uses, um, of the industrial uses, self-storage has probably the least amount of uh, trips per day, but also the type of vehicle that um, uses self-storage is, is in many cases, the automobile, the station wagon, the SUV, and, and the, the smaller pickup truck, or van, things of that nature, because that's the only that's the only they don't need larger things because these can only uh, these units can only accept certain size of uh, storage. <clears throat> so um, there'll be less traffic. Uh, there'll be better buffering and less intrusive uses, which all of which we think uh, goes to show how this proposed use, as composed as compared to pretty much any other industrial use, um, is uh, more compatible with a with a residential border um, and, and less less intrusive. I think I'm going to stop here and ask if the commission has any other questions. Commissioner's questions? Yes. I have a couple of uh, simple questions. Um, what are your hours of operation? The hours of operation are, and I think I've addressed that in the... You did, but I just yeah. wanted to make sure oh, that it hasn't good. changed. Oh, yeah. I think that's an excellent question. Uh, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, Saturday, where's that? That was my October 10th, I think. Yeah, uh, Saturday is uh, 8 to 5, mm -hmm. 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah. And Sunday is noon to 4 p.m. Can people get in there with a have a, uh, you know, that rent one of those without keeping to these hours? Yeah, w only within those hours. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. That answers one of my questions. Now, if I understood you correctly, you said there was no outside storage. You were just going to get rid of the um, trailers and the boats and the car automobile parking. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're we're not going to have like in the previous originally when we uh, 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 during the course of this application, we had designated a certain area, fenced in area. Uh, of the parking lot, the lower parking lot, to be used for like uh, large um, recreational vehicles. Uh, you know, it could be cars, uh, buses, boats, things like that. Uh, actually, uh, this uh, this commission has has uh, approved that uh, in the past in the 1980s, somewhere between 86 and 89, for one of the other self storage facilities in town here as uh, being permissible for for. Uh, for for uh, store, self storage thing uh, uses, which the, I think the commission has the authority to approve if we were seeking it. Well, the reason I ask is twofold. 
uh, you have a double star on the, the front page saying does not include spaces within fenced outdoor storage area. You're not looking at the latest plans. Oh. Yeah. yeah. What's we, the latest we plans? She said it does not include. Yeah, but, but, well, yeah, but we don't have, we, if, if it's there in the latest set of plans, it shouldn't be there. And you can, we're more than happy to accept a condition of, a, of, of a approval. We are not going to have any outdoor storage area. So that's September. September yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. I apologize, but I still have one more question. Was, was I correct? Yes, you were okay. correct. It's off. So, yeah. um, the only other question I had is um, parking. You had. Um, one space per 5,000 square feet of uh, gross floor area, mm -hmm. 32 spaces required. Mm -hmm. um, my concern, and it, you know, maybe I'm being over cautious, but my concern is, unless I looked at the wrong plans mm -hmm. for how you configured mm -hmm. the flooring, for the first floor I counted uh, 519, 500 square foot areas. Wait a minute. I'm not following you. Hold on one sec. I apologize. Yeah. Aha. No. First floor demo plan. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm just trying to find the right one so I don't ask the silly question. The proposed plan. Okay. Calculation. Okay. Tenant space 116 and 106 for the first floor for the two phases. That's on page 11 of 15. Page 11. Yep. And uh, the reason I ask is because, maybe not during the day, but um, you have set aside <coughs> where is it? 167 parking spaces. Oh, that's better. Okay. Because yeah, I was, I apologize, I was looking at the wrong number. At okay. first you had 74 and I was thinking, no, that's not enough. Well, that's a confusing with all the yeah. different Thank drawings you. we've had. I apologize. That's okay. So we got it. You yep. got it right? Good. I'm Thanks. Good. Anything else? Up to us in? No? Okay. I, I just have one question. In, in terms of you know, I, I noticed that the self storage area extends underneath the mezzanine floor framing system. Do, do you know if that mezzanine floor is, is a rated, you know, a, an actual rated construction, or will you be p providing supplemental, you know, ratings to the to the structure that's there, in order to, you know, create you know the kind of separation that you would need between the two usage of self storage and, and the warehousing up above, so that. Whatever you're doing doesn't necessarily compromise the integrity of the, the, the occupants in, a, in the second floor system, and you know, coupled with that, there's there's a, an egress that occurs on the east side of the building that you know basically travels underneath that same you know floor framing system, and is that going to be a self-contained egress system where it has an, you know a ceiling that's a rated ceiling, so that you, again you're not relying on the floor framing system for the rating. It's going to be whatever the building code and the building inspector requires us to have for uh, to get our building permit. And it sounds to me like that's a requirement. If it's a requirement, that's what we have to do. I thought. I think we. Yeah. Yeah. Speak? Yeah. Go ahead. The the mezzanine is con concrete construction. Right. But, but is it is it an actual rated system or or is it you know default, you can have concrete it's, and it's not actually rated. So. Well, it, by by default, it's protected and. It's it's rated. It's non-combustible type type at least two A. It's a rated system, and the egress quarters that you're referring to that are uh, that occur in a, a number of locations on the plan are all rated quarters. All the walls and ceilings create a complete rated 
life safety horizontal extension uh, as part of the egress system. So everything is safe. And the division between the uses is actually not a, a significant code division because the uses are, in the, in the building code, actually very similar. Could you just identify yourself for the record, oh, sure. Sorry. Yeah. Sure. Kevin Shea, Architecture EL. I'm the architect submitting the plans. Could I, I want to make sure I understand. You're, you're saying that certain concrete burns? No, you need a certain thickness in order to get the, the kind thickness. of, yeah. Okay. So, you know, basically you. you can have a concrete slab, but if it's relatively lightweight or if it's re relatively thin, it doesn't really give you a, a rating. So, basically. Oh, you, so you, in other words, if it's really thin, it doesn't really serve any, correct. it doesn't hold the fire. Correct. It's correct. more of the hours that it takes for the, I got correct. you. Correct. I got you. Correct. So, so you need a certain, you know, yeah. thickness it's of concrete in order to achieve any, you know. Oh, well, I'm sure that that is significant and it's already separating the uses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, well, I guess, you know, originally it was, you know, a single tenant so that, you know, yeah. now all of a sudden you got multiple tenants. So, you, know, you know, it's funny. I, I ran into uh, a, one, of the, one, of the, one of the last guys that worked at Hallmark before they shut it down in the, in the he used to interface with the fire marshal at all time. And he thought that the guy was very, he thought the fire marshal was very tough on him. So I'm thinking that he, they, he probably would have picked up on that. And that was supposed to be joke but I guess it's worth now he's well that's the type of review that uh, would be done at the building permit level yeah uh, that's, when that's, that's when you point. go through the exact details with the with the fire marshal and the building official I agree 100 percent and it, I, if he's not satisfied we're gonna have to find a way to satisfy him but yeah, as, as long as you know we, we have it covered in terms of you know yeah, just because it's, of where it's located oh yeah I can see I absolutely uh, see your concern and um, I was just thinking that, uh, wow, I never knew about, uh, I, I wasn't thinking in terms of thickness. I was thinking about combustibility, but that's a good point. All right, thank you. Linda, you. Okay. A, a question on the uh, storage bins. Are they uh, permanent or are they movable? In other words, somebody comes in, wants a larger bin, do you tear a wall down and move it and to accommodate them? Or are you, are all these sizes? Modular. Yeah. They're, they're modular. So, so if they're modular, that means that if, if you have two 10 by, I'm not, I say you had two 10 by 20s, or if they, and, you, and some guy wanted a 20 by 20, you'd, you'd take the wall down. That's, okay, yeah, that's yeah. what I want to know. The hallway doesn't change. Yeah. I just wanted to follow up on a question. Um, <coughs> hours of operation are seven to seven, and then eight to five, and, but there's no, a person just can't walk up to their storage unit after hours and access it. The only way to access the inside of the unit is going in the front door, which would be locked at those right. times. Okay, yeah. thank you. The, and this is, you know, the coder. They can, you know, their their access codes are only going to work during the hours of operation. So, you know, there's there's ways you can control access. Um, plus, you, you know, and it's this I didn't mention it earlier, but this has all the re cameras and security devices and things of that nature because. You want to have them because that's what people want. They want to make sure there is security inside. There's people on, on duty at all times as, uh, you know, employees or, say, a manager and things of that nature to, uh, to help people and to sign them up and to, you know, and also for security purposes. But, yeah, I mean, during, when I say hours, I'm talking about that's when it's open. If, you, if it's after 7 o'clock, you can't get into your unit. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I actually have a couple of questions. One is uh, on the security. Mm -hmm. Is that a 24-hour security system? You have someone on site all 24 hours? Because in this letter that is actually very persuasive toward allowing this, he said there's a lot of activities on site now that are undesirable. And I would wonder how you're going to address that. Well, which one are you talking about? It's a letter from Mr. Parrots, 23 Manning Road. I don't know if you got a oh. copy or not. Yeah, we didn't actually get to the public comment section, but this is a letter. Yeah, today at 516. But it says there's all kind of activities like hot rodding on, this, on the open parking lots, the abandoned parking lots, well, uh, care of that. parties, and, and drug parties, and all kinds of stuff. It might, be, a, it might be appropriate that he responds to all public comments. Yeah, that's okay. Well, I, my question was, uh, what type of security they had? Yeah, I was going to ask. Daylight or 
eight hours a day, 20 hours a day. Well, Chip, you want to comment on that? Uh, it's news to me that there's any sort of... You have of to come up and identify yourself for the record, sir. You're on television. Uh, my name is Chip Labonte. You have to sit the, at the I'm seat. the primary owner of the facility. That's news to me that there's any sort of activity of that nature. Um, we gave the police uh, two years ago notice um, to evict any primarily tractor-trailer trucks that were idling. That was the purpose of giving the police notice or capacity to evict anybody. I've never heard of anything in terms of people congregating there. Um, but to your point regarding security, um, it, presently we have a, a alarm system and we're going to supplement that with a lot of cameras. Um, I'm not, so are we gonna, it's not gonna be staffed 24 hours a day, no. Um, the staffing will just be during the hours of operation. Okay, and the alarm will go to a central system, or that's the way it works right now. I mean, we pay an alarm company, and um, you know, it's they'll notify you know, appropriate people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's millions of dollars worth of stuff in the building right now, and we have alarms and security system as it is. I mean, obviously for um, retail brands. You know. My only other question would probably be to you also is uh, with uh, self storage sites. Eventually, someone doesn't pay the rent and you end up auctioning off the stuff in the site. How do you plan on dealing with that? A monthly basis, a quarterly, or? Um, I guess, you know, that, that's a, a simply a business process. Right. Um, sort of unpleasant. You don't really want to Some get of into that. Some auctions draw quite a crowd. That's why. I, uh, oh. Um, you. you I, I, I can't I probably I quarterly I mean we're not anxious to have them and you know naturally would rather people just pay their bills and take their stuff um, we're not looking to have I think you know it's a little bit hype based on the fact that they world, have yes. TV shows about that um, you know we're more anxious to really just take your stuff and get out because frankly if we have somebody that's not paying we would just as soon them take their stuff and get a new tenant that is going to pay so, okay. I mean, having an auction is a, the least desirable oh. result. Okay. Uh, just interesting how you're going to deal with that. But it is a reality of that business. <laughs> because there's a television show. <laughs> no, because it's in the paper every No, week, I appreciate it. You're right. From you're absolutely different right. different other sites in the, in the county and in the state. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Further questions from the commission before I open it? Gentlemen, if you'll vacate and, uh, of course, you return if you wish, wish to. You can leave that. You can leave that there for this one. We can respond. We'll pick it up again. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, is the camera off because it's coming back right Right in the eye. <laughs> we'll get her sunglasses. Yeah, I need them. <laughs> Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak in favor or against this application? Please come forward, ma'am. Name and address for the record. Shani Lero, 12 Manning Road. Um, actually, I have a couple concerns, um, and I guess this is uh, a 1976 July 8th that was a uh, public hearing concerning Manning Road and the issues. And I guess a couple of the, these um, statements um, by Ms. Podosek, who was a well-known at that point, uh, has since passed, uh, addressed the planning and zoning concerning Manning Road. And it just seems that from 1976, and we're in 2017, it's, it seems to be the same issues. And again, I know that um, people from the planning and zoning have left and come and gone. Um, Manning Road, I mean, uh, Hallmarks has come and gone. Wallace is no longer there. It was actually ABC Container. But it's still the same concerns. And what she's saying, the primary concern of the planning 
Zoning Commission and the Planning Board should be the protection of the health and safety of the people. The Manning Road residents presently do not have the protection of health and safety. They have been subjected to much stress for many years. Hallmarked and Wallace should have never been allowed to build in that area originally. That was the first area, allowed to the expansion, which actually compounded the area. Um, uh, I'm just I'm not to read the whole thing. Um, before Hallmarks and Wallace building built their building, they should have planned an access road. There should have been somewhere to access out so that we should not have to be dealing with this. Okay. Um, I think the factor. Um, Anyone who owns a home has a time-honored right to understand possessions, pride, and the enjoyment of their home and the rights of the Manning Road residents to pride and enjoy what has been damaged by the constant trucks coming by the dust, air pollution, safety hazard, the reduction of property value, and especially the mental and physical stress from tension and frustration. Um, and again, I know that I've, I've sat here many, many times concerning about the expansion of different um, buildings, um, and some of them have g passed, um, and some of them kind of slide by the way, and all of a sudden they were resurrected, and all of a sudden there's a building there. My concern has always been not for um, the industry part, because obviously industry is very important, and I really feel for, for what these gentlemen are trying to accomplish. My concern is this is a little road and there should be some way to access. You know, they want to do whatever they want. That's fine. Nobody on this road has an issue with that. It's the way out. If there was a way to get in, which I believe now there is, and a way to get out to eliminate Manning Road, I don't think any of us would be constantly coming to the planning and zoning to address these issues. I know that you uh, passed um, I think it was last year, hours of operation, um, and that was supposed to be a six-day operation. And passed, boom, now came back and wanted a seven-day operation. So again, it's all this money that the town has to give out to go through lawyers because now we're going into seven. It was approved for six. You give somebody a little piece of bread, now they want the whole loaf. And I'm not saying this is going to happen. That's all I'm saying is that some more thought has to be into this road. How do people get out? If they want this, this is fine. Uh, nobody has a problem with it. Nobody has ever had a problem with industry. It's getting out, getting access away from us. That, that's, that's all it's always been. Um, you're saying now that um, these people, uh, I think it's 12 to 6 on Sunday, OK? So does that mean more cars, more traffic on Manning Road? I don't know, because obviously I don't know what this is going to entail. That's all I know. If there was a way out eliminating Manning Road, there, there would be no issue. Um, I just don't think that at this point, um, I think this needs to get fixed first. Fine line. I don't know who, who needs to fix it. I, I, at this point, I don't know whether it's a planning and zoning. I don't know what's a town council. I really don't know. But somewhere along the line, since 1976, it's been the same issue over and over again. And again, we brought this up last time. We have now access for a short driveway, whatever, to get out. Um, I don't know, even know at this point, rezoning it to build houses, more residential um, houses or apartments down there would be the option. I don't know. This all I know is from 1976, the same issues get brought up over and over again. And actually to comment on um, the police taking note, um, yes, there are people that are parked overnight. They are. Are there kids on dirt bikes down there using their ramp? Bet your life there is. And are they enforcing on the last restriction that you had on the tractor trailer trucks? No, they're not. I mean, that's all I have to say. It's just like, you know, it's like we live there. This is our home. I, I like to be happy, you know, being out in my garden. I, I really don't want to end up being here tonight to complain. I have much better things to do. And I'm sure you don't want to listen to me. And I'm sure these people want what the, they, they want to start a business. I understand that. But what I'm saying is somewhere along the line, there's got to be a deviation from Manning Road. Thank you.
Anyone else to address the commission? <coughs> Policeman. Anyone else to address the commission? Anyone else? Yes, sir. Name and address, please, for the record. I have to go up there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, sir. Dean Fisher, 3 Manning Road. I can't. They, that will not take. Uh, Say it in the mic so you're on television. It's, it's, oh, it's great. being recorded also. Dean, th Dean Fisher, 3 Manning Road. Um, I, have, I know there's going to be industry down there and everything. Um, Town of Enfield spent a lot of money on improving that road. It's going to be a nice wide avenue. Um, I used to work at Manning Road, Hallmark, and um, plant manager always used to tell us, lecture us about speeding. There was a lot of, uh, you know, people will speed. And that road is going to be a big, huge avenue. I noticed that the trucks using it now, they're professional drivers. They're, they're, they're driving at a slow, speed, slow rate. And uh, I appreciate that as a homeowner. Um, but you, you have a lot of, uh, I'm thinking of this type of business. You're getting a lot of people, you know, using these, they're not professional drivers. And they're gonna have this big wide avenue. And the speed is, I think, it, people just drive crazy. And I think it's gonna be a, vo a higher volume of speeding traffic. Like I said, when I worked at Manning Road, you know, we got lectured, and most people followed it, but there was always people that sped. But when you don't have anybody, you know, lecturing, you know, people that are just having storage units, they're going to be speeding. That's my concern. If everybody drove 15 miles an hour down that road and I knew they were going to, I wouldn't care, you know. Um, you know, our, you know, my property is my investment, you know, and I don't want to, I, I think it's it's you know it's a anytime you buy a property you want it to appreciate or hold its value at least but um, hopefully you know people will obey the speed limit but like I say the way people drive nowadays on a big nice road like it's going to be um, I think it's going to be an issue um, but that's my concern and you know. Uh, I know there's going to be industry down there. I have no problem with that. Um, but uh, I don't know what type of industry is better, you know. And, um, you know, they're non-professional drivers, and people are just going to drive, drive fast. So that's my piece. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anyone else to address the commission? Anyone else to address the commission? Commissioners? Roger, you look like you want to say something. I, I just had a couple of housekeeping uh, details, Mr. Chairman. On your agenda, it says must open public hearing as you um, on ten fourteen. As you know, you actually opened the public hearing on October the fifth, um, so you met that that criteria, and you you opened it on October fifth, and you continued it to tonight. Um, the date that. Should should have been on your agenda was to that the date to close the public hearing you would have to close it by November eighth if you felt there was any reason to keep it over open tonight. Um, staff does not um, believe that there would be any reason to keep it open. Uh, uh, you've re um, received the comments from the uh, the fire marshal that he's now concerned. Uh, we had a, a list of concerns that carried over from previous public hearings of the commission uh, with re that we conveyed to the applicant and they have addressed those concerns. Uh, if you l remember the aerial photograph that was put up um, tonight, you saw that tractor trailers went within like 15 or 20 feet of the houses along the side. That road is now gone, and there's a 100-foot buffer in there that the asphalt's being torn up and the grass is being put in. Um, and, the, uh, and the issue with the outdoor storage and the 8-foot fence and the razor wire is gone, and the issue of the um, cars getting in and out of the building uh, and the gasoline, that's gone. Uh, so, um, from a staff standpoint, the applicant has responded to staff we concerns. We also have the fire escapes. And, and then the fire escape as well, uh, which uh, was, a, was a big concern. Uh, that, has, that has been addressed. Um, and for that reason, uh, we did uh, prepare a, uh, 
a proposed uh, resolution uh, that uh, for your consideration, the only thing is you might want to add a, from our standpoint, on, might want to add a 9A and list the hours of operation. And maybe a 9B, um, no outside storage. Roger, can we make a recommendation to Public Works about putting speed bumps in Manning Road? Um, you know, I was sitting here thinking about speed bumps and, um, you know, when you put speed bumps on uh, streets um, and then like vehicles, like landscaping vehicles go up and down and the back end of the thing bounces and bounces every time. And I was trying to think of the tractor trailers going over the speed bumps. Uh, so I'm not sure that the, uh, I mean, I'm not sure that that's... Roger, when, that, we, when we designed the uh, traffic calming uh, section, I think, is that the, uh, the addendums? Yeah. Uh, we used bump outs and other items rather than speed bumps or dips mm -hmm. because of that. Right. The fire department doesn't like them particularly because you break, right. break, break the back of the tanks Right. So, uh, I also wonder whether they would be louder with, with bump outs and for all cars, not even just the tractor trailers. But that's, I mean, that I'd, was, I'd be yeah, curious but, to hear what but, yeah. uh, that, that that is traffic calming thing. I I don't know because uh, they didn't come to us with the roads. That could be something that we look at in the future, or uh, the town might consider in the future. But engineering hasn't been commutative with us. Yeah, and you have to allow for snow plowing of the road. That's so right. right. That ruins the speed bumps. The, on, the only thing I was told by a Plows. resident today is on the uh, redoing of the road, they've presently put the, the driveway apron where the driveway apron's going to be excluded. So that's going to have to be addressed. Um, <clears throat> The, no, Hartford has been using driveway pad, uh, speed control pads that are like six feet across. So you don't have that bam, bam when you first, you, it's almost like a little bridge. And it seems well, to work on the streets. Right, got it on we can't put it in. Um, I mean, ultimately, the, I think the planning and zoning could recommend speed bumps, but I would think that would be the jurisdiction of the traffic authority. It, it, well, it should be somebody else. It is somebody else's jurisdiction. That's why I just said a recommendation, not a, right. exactly. not a condition. I think the, uh, uh, well, that could be a condition possibly to look at in the future. Uh, because uh, one of the major concerns in the past was the shaking of the buildings and the, uh, the foundations. That should be because of the reconstruction which was a total reconstruction, or is a total reconstruction, they aren't done yet. Uh, I mean, I, I do sure think that if you were going to consider yeah, speed speed bumps, uh, that you would want engineering, public works, fire, and police to Absolutely. comment on those. And well, they, they, they weren't part of any proposal tonight. No, they assisted when we did the uh, traffic calming to, uh, because there was a lot of concern with the Street that's opposite uh, Freshwa, uh, the yeah, I'll get the wrong mall. Uh, where the mall comes out up on Elm Street and comes straight across, and, and the developments up in there, and this, the the uh, bump outs and so forth were all designed for up in that area. But that would be something that. that we couldn't do tonight anyway. No. Except to possibly note that it could be something to look at in the future. I mean, it, I guess I question whether the proposed use here, it doesn't change the current, Mr. Chair, it doesn't, it, does it change the current uh, volume of tractor trailers going in? That would Absolutely. probably. Absolutely. It would. It would add more or less or stay the same? Well, I, I think the discussion was that it, and, and we can talk about this later. Um, but right. but th that you know the the, the 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 size of the vehicles 
accessing the, the self storage units are going to be significantly smaller. Therefore, the, you know, they'll have a, a lesser impact. And the, the only question becomes, you know, the, the speed of the vehicles that are utilizing that. So, you know, obviously, you know, we, we can not prohibit people from going down the street. We, we sort of, tr we try to minimize the impact they have on the residents that live on the street by, you know, either their speed or the amount of, you know, noise or, you know, shaking of the ground that this occurs is more depending like a discussion on right that we have yeah later. yeah that's that's what i'm Thank trying you. to say <laughs> so yeah anyways. i think the the decision you you have to make is are you keeping the public hearing open or closed yeah. and if you have all the information that you need then you would close it and then you'd have your discussion uh do you wish to yeah the attorney fahey <coughs> To rebut or, or to answer the questions. I just want to uh, uh, clarify the record a little bit. Uh, add one thing: uh, the sign affidavit has been signed and is part of the record. I don't know if that was said earlier. Just wanted to make sure that was clear. Um, and a, as to the comment, as to your comment about the apron, if that's there, we'll do whatever the town wants because you know we'll, we got a landscape, so we got to get rid of it. So there's no question about that. Uh, and as to the comments from the, uh, um, uh, is it Mrs. LaRue or Lero? Um, they, um, I, would, I would simply say this, um, I didn't think I made the point earlier, is that um, the owner has made a, a tremendous effort to, to, um, to, in the course of his leasing the building, to actually reduce the truck traffic on, on Manning Road, A, with his existing tenants uh, and uh, he's just, he knows from talking to the, the two principal tenants that that they're generating probably about 50 trips a, a week um, which is way lower uh, than um, the types of the type of uh, traffic you would get with a distribution center way way lower and um, not largely because of the the uh, Brooks Brothers or a retail warehouse, whatever their technical name is, as it's it's really what they call dead storage. You know, they don't they don't have to go out every day with to, to fit up a new new store, so there's no need to have uh, you know repetitive uh, trucks like they would if it was a, a distribution center or any many of the other permitted uses in the industrial zone. And as to the comment uh, from the gentleman, it's the first time I've ever heard that uh, truck drivers don't speed. I mean, speeding is an enforcement problem. I mean, it's, it's, whether you have a truck or uh, uh, or you have a car or a van or, you know, a station wagon, whatever it is, uh, you know. Uh, and I, and I'm, not to make light of it, but it's, it's, first of all, the comments he made were completely speculative. And if there's an enforcement problem, then I think it's a combination of, you know, the police and I don't know what other uh, calming devices can, can work, but I guess from what I heard, the comments, the reluctance with speed bumps is a tough sell with Public Works and uh, oh, and many other co countries. So I, I, you know, I don't know what it is, but I mean, um, I don't think it's fair to say that. Um, I mean, what it, <laughs> you can't. I think I can't think of an industrial use that that is less intrusive than than. Um, than self-storage in terms of in an industrial zone, especially one where they've had a whole history of many years of, of 24 hours a day of a major distribution center. To me, I mean, you know, I know I'm representing the applicant, so to that extent, I'm prejudiced. To me, they should be welcome in this type of use because there's, there's a lot of other uses that could be much more offensive. Um, and um, so hopefully, uh, we'll be able to prove that we're going to do what we say we're going to do. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else would like to address the commission? Last call. All right, we go all night with this. Actually, it would be... Janie Lero, 12 Manning Road. Actually, I, saw, I had a petition signed concerning speed bumps before the road actually was implemented. And I addressed that. I had over three pages of signatures because it was, well, we don't want speed bumps because your houses will shake a little bit more. And I basically said, well, they couldn't shake much more than mine is now. And it doesn't have to be at the whole street. It could be 
periodically. Ma'am, I mean, we can't I don't do have anything a, about speed bumps. Uh, period. So uh, if well, that's what I'm just trying to say. What, you know, we we're throwing this out, but it was something that I addressed way okay. back when. Thank that's you. all I'm trying to say. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else to address the commission? Anyone else to address the commission? Third and last call to address the commission. Attorney Fahey, are you? You're done. That's a desire of the commission to close. You, you, commission, Mr. Chair, I, I have one more question. In terms All of, right. you know, I, I guess there's 1,507 some something square feet of, of storage area, but I've never seen anything that indicates how many units you're going to have in there. So is is there sort of a rule of thumb as to? That's why I asked about movable. You don't. In, in terms of a worst case or a best case scenario? Well, considering, um, I think uh, Chairman Duran mentioned that, uh, asked about the. That's why I asked. That, yeah. So that could vary because if you, you know, it could be two. I'm just using right. 10 by 20. Well, well, well I, I guess as a worst case scenario, what's the maximum? Worst density? case scenario, about 1,200. 1,200 mm -hmm. units. All right, and, and I, I guess that's what, what I'm looking at is, is what would be the worst case scenario, and then there could obviously be always less than that. Yeah, I mean, you know, because if someone wants a, a 20 by 20, 40 by 40, that's four units or one unit, you know, right. depending on, you know, the, basically the depth is always pretty much the same, it's the width. Okay, you know? right. So and of course, you, you could put double door, you know, and, and whatever, but it's, it is flexible because it's what, what's, on, you know, on demand. Typically, if you look at the literature, there's usually a certain percentage <coughs> of this size, a certain percentage of that size, but it, it varies from, from area of the country to area of the country. So, so if, if you had 12, Hundred units, and in, in terms of, you know, it, is I, I'm sure there, there's sort of a, a rate of fulfillment that you're going to have. And in, in terms of, do you anticipate, you know, the first, you know, three or four months you're going to get, you know, 10 percent, you know, usage, and then after that it, it's sort of, you know, five percent, you know, a I, month. I really I mean the ab it? absorption rate you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah I guess because that's going to dictate how much traffic we're going to obviously see. So, so I, I mean, as a worst case scenario, you got 1,200 units, and I'm just trying to sort of determine, you know, what are we looking at as a possibility for the increase in traffic, and, and, and you know, at, at first, is it going to be 10 extra cars a day? You know, so would would give us you know 300 units being you know utilized in, in you know the first you know 10 days or you know the first month and you know and, and I guess I'm just looking at sort of you know how much more traffic or how much less traffic are we going to have you know eventually? Well, uh, the, the the question is, I. Uh, the point I'm making before is, is you got to remember, my point for this whole thing is, whatever whatever it is, it would be less than any other use in the industrial zone because of the nature of the operation. That that's what I'm trying to say. But, but I guess what we're trying to do is educate the public in terms of yeah, you know give yeah, them yeah. an idea because right. right now they have this conception that they're they're getting you know more traffic and it's going to be faster and it's going to be you know more obtrusive. But but you know if we can sort of have a sort of a timetable that initially you're going to see you know so many cars possibly yeah, you know a day change. and then after that it, you know it's it's going to be very minimal because okay. you know nobody's going to visit your storage unit every single day. So yeah. so that you know and and it's just well, you know you compare it to what's over on Elm Street or uh, has it happened. Right. And, and I guess I'm just trying to get, you know, an order of magnitude. Because everybody's saying it's going to be less, it's going to be less, it's going to be less. But nobody really says, well, you know, what, you know in, in terms of statistically, you know, what, yeah. what do you anticipate is going to happen? Well, well it's empty now, so any traffic is going to be more. Well, my point, the point I'm making is, is it's less than what it could be with a different tenant. But do you have uh, yeah. any idea what... Hallmark employed down there. It, that that seems to be the background of of traffic. Yeah. How many people they employed? Or right. Uh, do, you, do you have any guesstimate of what they employed? Uh, I don't know. I I really don't know. But I can talk. We can count I mean, on the you, absorption. You, yeah. No. I mean that's that's the linchpin. But really. I, see, they oh, they I, used all. Don't forget. They they not only had the traffic, but they they were, they had employees. That's plus what the, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the they they used all the spaces. Never mind yeah, the, yeah. the additional traffic. Yeah. So yeah. your your point of working would be coming from what Hallmark had of employees plus the traffic they had yeah. that 
wasn't uh, created by their employees. Right, right. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, what we're looking for is, you know, the, the initial baseline that was there and, and, and how much are we reducing it, you know. And, and again, you know, trying to get an order of magnitude rather than, you know, just leave it, you know, it's less. And, and But, you know, what does also, that mean? You also have eliminated so, trucks, really, right. for that. Right. So, so yeah, you know, and I, you know, the, the thing is, you know, what I just want to do is have everybody have an educated, you know, yeah information or some some information that that sounds like you know you can put a number on it and, and you know people you can't can get a number you can't get a number because it's expandable right well well the number you know, well you can talk about the absorption okay so we are going to um phase the construction so we'll probably do a third a third and a third um we don't know exactly how many units there are because one of the things that we want to take advantage of in phasing is seeing what size units are more desirable, and that is to say whether or not a 10 by 10 unit is more desirable as based on their leasing or rental history than a 20 by 10 unit. So th therein lies the whole equation as to how many units are there going to be. W all we know is how many square feet that we would like to use and we can guesstimate based on an average size unit and then from there extrapolate you know an approximate number of units um so we expect there that somewhere in the you know over three phases so only a third of that or so is going to be available initially and then once we lease out that sp portion of the building we'll go into another phase and i mean naturally with people putting their furniture in there we don't expect them to visit their furniture or add in and take out more than a few times a year Right, right. Well, I, I guess, you know, from what, from what you're really saying is that, you know, if you're going to do it in three phases, there's, there's 400 units in, in, say, the first phase. And if it takes you, you know, four months to, to fill those 400 units, that would be 100, you know, additional trips, you know, per month. So at 100 additional trips per month, you can probably get, you know, three a day or y y you see what I'm saying I'm, I'm so, sort of just throwing numbers and, and that's so if if, if three, there's only one visit there you're not gonna have people 300 people going down each day to check their no no well, that's no I'm no I, I guess what we're Once saying they're is they're in there they're in there right and 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 that's what we're trying to do is, is throw a disorder of magnitude where you know you might get you know three or four or five people a day you know, going to renting a unit. That's right. We would, I think that we would be extremely fortunate if we were able to lease out 400 units in the course of four months. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. So one of the things that's difficult for us to know about is that this is a new type of facility as opposed to in the Springfield, Hartford area, there really isn't much uh, climate controlled indoor storage. Oh. So we're hoping that it's going to be appealing and the customers are going to want on it um, as opposed to the more conventional drive up um, type units so but we expect a much longer lease out period um, and uh, it we also think that the the traffic generated by people in and out of their unit is going to be extremely low I mean initially it's probably a, a visit to sort of check out you know our security our location and cleanliness and in the like of what we're offering and then if they opt to sign a rental agreement to come back and move their stuff in and then you know maybe add in take out occasionally over the course of their rental period but really not a lot of active in and out as opposed to what mr Faye was saying you know with 150,000 square feet and 15 overhead doors i mean a distribution facility in there would wreak tremendous havoc and it would really add an unconscionable level of vehicles, heavy trucks going back in, back and forth there that we don't want to bring to the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay, we got to go back out again. And anyone in the audience would like to speak? Anyone in the audience would like to speak? <coughs> Last call for anyone in the audience who'd like to speak, Attorney Fahey. Again, you okay, Roger, again. What's the desire to close? You don't have the reports. You could uh, make sure that it's in the conditions that they have to be received before they get their 
Well, I will, I will, but uh, it should be part of the conditions. Have you seen the, the condition, Attorney Fahey? Uh, no, I haven't. Roger. Are they the standard conditions? Or? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. They're, the, they're the standard conditions. There's only uh, four site conditions at the moment. One is the buff area should be installed and maintained. Uh, the tractor trailer access to the property is limited to the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. And then it lists your hours of operations, which you've said are 7 to 7, Monday to Friday, Saturday 8 to 5, Sunday 12 to 4. And then the other one is there would be no outdoor storage. I mean, I'm familiar with the standard conditions, and those four are acceptable. No problems. Okay. <coughs> All right, then I'll close public hearing 2874. Uh, again, the, the, you had some, some questions earlier uh, from Council, Council, uh, Council <laughs> from uh, Commissioner uh, Gruber. Now, you, the conditions with, with Hallmark, again, you had employees, and I, I don't know the number, it was quite, quite large. In fact, it got so large they had to open a second, uh, a second building. Uh, they also had, as was pointed out by the applicant, multiple trucks. You can see that by the, the number of bays. And these were uh, train, uh, tractor trailers so this proposal to me has decreased the number of truck traffic that will get down there the roads have been improved uh, it's been mentioned of traffic calming desires but we can't do that from here uh, police department would do our the public works, but most of public works has been against it, and so the, most of the fire departments have been too because of the, the, the tankers. Uh, but the traffic, as was pointed out when Rich was questioning, was storage. Once they're in there, the frequency of visiting your storage locker is minimal. Uh, people don't go down and visit it all the time, and uh, I, it, it's an improvement. It's never, never. It's the best offer that we've had, as was pointed out. It, it is zoned industrial. I think, yeah, I think that's kind of the issue, which is, you know, we're struggling to harmonize the traffic and the noise and the shaking next to all residential uses when maybe that's You've also got the elimination of a large parking area. Uh, possibly, hopefully, the kids won't be running through the grass with their, as I mentioned, uh, doing wheelies or, or riding their motorcycles uh, and tearing up the grass. but. They have done that because I know people have, while well, it's been empty down there, taking their daughters or sons down there for driver training or instead of going down the road. But to me, it's, a, it's not the best deal because it's for the people that have been put up with it. It's the best deal that we've had. And I don't see anything else once you go into heavier equipment or anything requiring trucks. That's not to say somebody won't get it. Depends on how large a unit they get, then somebody won't get a tractor trailer. And just along those lines, I'd, I'd like to sort of point out that initially, you know, if they are going to be building these storage, in, interior storage units, there will be some, some traffic trailer truck associated with, you know, the, the storage system just to get, you know, the equipment in there. So, but then once it's, it's more or less stabilized, it should be, you know, sort of a, you know, a, 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 a reduction in the overall size of the vehicles. And, and obviously, you know, getting back to our earlier discussion, you know, we, the, you know, the speed has to be controlled, and that, that's basically, you know, something that we can't do other than the fact that we could, you know, sort of have, you know, an enforcement 
officer possibly, you know, in that area, you know, to sort of, you know, try to calm it down and, you know, or maybe, you know, I know that, you know, I, more and more I see these, you know, self sustained, you know, speed limit signs that go on as you start approaching them and they tell you exactly what your speed is and, and they, they either flash red when you're going too fast or they flash green when you're sort of at the right speed limit. And, and maybe, you know, there, this would be an ideal place for one of those signs, but it's, it's not something that we could sort of dictate at this time. I'd also like to add, add that with proper management, this could quiet that whole area down because now they're going to the the trucks that are going down there are going to realize well wait a minute they can get my license plate they got video cameras going and if that's posted that there's video cameras it does deter a lot of um, activity um, so with good management and the management willing to work with the police department you'd be surprised what happens a lot of that stuff goes away. Anything further? Yeah, okay, Close so it. the, yeah, it's closed. Yeah, and we're just having discussion. Right. If you, so you want to make a motion? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion uh, it's similar to our draft re resolution dated October 19, 2017. Whereas the Planning and Zoning Commission has received an application for a self-storage facility located at 53 Manning Road, Map 34, Lot 15, okay. Industrial Zone 1, whereas a public hearing was held on October 5, 2017 and October 19, 2017, and whereas the applicant has provided a, the required 100-foot buffer on the east side of the property adjacent to the residential zone, and whereas the applicant has provided an outdoor stairway from the second floor to the building, and whereas the applicant has met all the requests of the commission and staff, now therefore be it resolved that the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby approves public hearing 2873 for a self-storage facility located at 53 Manning Road with the following conditions. And basically there's a, a significant amount of drawings that were available. Um, there's the general conditions, there's seven general conditions. Just, uh, why don't you just reference the, the memo from uh, I, the planner's office. Okay. The uh, dated uh, October 19th, 2017. Uh, yes, and, and I'm just gonna add the, the, the other, yeah, right. the, the other conditions that were sort of added. Yeah, so. no, but uh, right. then the re reference right. the, so, the date. Right, so, that'll take yes. Care of it. And I think we, we've added, you know, two additional conditions under site specific. The hours of operation were going to be Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. through 7 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday, 12 noon to 4 p.m. And the other condition is that there will be no outdoor storage. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Raquel uh, reminded me that number nine uh, should say Monday to Saturday. Your, your conditions on everything else on Manning Road is no tractor trailers on Sunday. Right. So, and, and that, you know, no tractor trailer will be revised from mon Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And no tractor trailers on Sunday at all. They can handle that by putting a sign up in the office uh, if there should be anybody. That yeah. Just to clarify uh, what you're saying is, we can be open, but just can't. Tractor trailers would be very uh, rarely used anyway for our use. But yeah, but I they understand there's no tractor trailers at all on Sundays. What I understand. If you should, right, right. right. It's fine. Second this motion. Motion's made. Seconded. Again, discussion. I um, was not present for the, or I was present for the prior hearing, but I did not have the application with me, so I will uh, be abstaining from this vote. Okay, anyone else? If you're ready, no, no comments? Okay, if you're yeah. all in favor? One, two, three, four, five, four. One, abs uh, no, uh, none against, and one abstention. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you for straightening this out, Mr. Doctor. <laughs> <Yeah, doctor. laughs> Attorney Faye. Okay, let's give them a few minutes. Uh, 
You want your five minutes now, Roger? Or what do you want to do, people? Do you want a break or keep going? Five-minute break. Keep or? Going. Let's keep going. Well, that's clearing out. That's all. Okay. Like Roger does. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll take a five-minute break. Then. Mr. Roger. Chair, I'll make a motion that we have a five-minute break. All in favor? Second. Okay. <sighs>
secretary please take the roll? Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Rich Suzakis here and Guillermo Salazar. Here. Okay, public hearing uh, 2878, 1654 King Street. Uh, <clears throat> the secretary, please take the uh, roll and read the legal okay. notice, either direction. Okay. You the, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, October 19th, 2019, beginning at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers. 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following applications. Public hearing 2878, 1654 King Street, special permit application for a multi-use development as well as a motor vehicle repair garage, JFP Realty LLC owner, Christy Shelby applicant, map 13, lot 9, industrial I-2 zone, Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Sierra Gruber. Here. Um, Linda DeGray. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. And Guillermo Salazar. Here. Sorry about that. No, you're saying it perfectly. Uh, alternates DeGray and Gruber will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. Is the applicant here? Good evening. Uh, for the record, Jay Ursry, J.R. Russo and Associates here representing uh, the applicant industrial diesel. Uh, Christy Selby sitting to my right, John Petronella also to my right, the property owner of JFP Realty, uh, Doug Selby sitting behind us uh, in the audience. Um, this is an application that you've actually seen before a number of months ago. It was submitted to you. Uh, to allow a uh, motor vehicle repair garage or truck repair garage on this particular property. And there were some, I guess I'll use the word speed bumps. We've heard that a couple things, a couple times tonight. So there were some speed bumps uh, that we ran into and uh, the application was withdrawn, uh, worked with staff and with you uh, to uh, get some text amendments to allow some outside storage on the site, a zone change, which was also applied for and approved by this commission uh, to at least get the entire property all within the I-2 zone, which it was not uh, when we made the initial application. So those things have been taken care of. We made some revisions and we've resubmitted an application and, and I guess uh, we're back. Um, we've submitted, staff has reviewed and we've met with your staff uh, actually just yesterday to go over a number of the comments uh, that you have and you've seen and discuss them and we are probably going to be making some revisions to this plan that you have in front of you. Well, if you're going to make revisions, why are you making presentation tonight? I was I'm sorry about because, you know, we can continue this, but you... you, you we put in a lot of time and you're wa wasting our time and other people's time if you're going to make a revision give it to us and let us get it over with and we will be giving it to you but statutorily you're required to open the hearing well, tonight I, can open it. I, I'll have I to felt open that it. it was necessary to give you just a quick overview of where we are you have some new commissioners who haven't seen this don't know what happened. Well, why should they see it if you're going to come in? I, as my question, I don't know. If you're coming back. We will be back. Uh, and there will be some you revisions. So I, apparently if it's, I'm looking at the, the if it's the chair's position that they don't want to hear any more this evening, that's fine. Uh, well, I, that's up to the commission. If you want to continue having them to hear it, I have to open it and I have to have the public talk if they w wish to. But it, this isn't the final plan. And I never got 
that plan. Well, so, I don't think anybody Well, he just got plan. it, but we, I have not had a chance to review it, so I don't know why. Well, Mr. Chairman, if I may, John Petronio, yes, the owner. Uh, go ahead, John. We, uh, we met with staff. We, we got the comments from the staff just last week on Thursday, a little bit late. We, we pushed to have a meeting with them on Tuesday. We went through, through, the, uh, uh, um, through the comments, and uh, we, we, uh, uh, we have to make some minor modifications. Um, and I was told yesterday that uh, to, to be here by staff and uh, that they would probably open a, open a hearing but wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do anything and have to extend it because we, we wouldn't get the, the comments back and addressed You're in time. Right. I right. understand that. Believe me, we don't want to be here if we shouldn't have to be here. But we were asked to be here that they would probably open it up uh, and probably open it up well, to I the do. public. I, I'm and, legally required to open yeah. it. Okay. But it, it's sort of, to me, and, and apparently to some of the commission, sort of foolish to have you do a presentation that doesn't mean anything. I, I, I understand. And, and again, so, so if I could just short circuit it, I think you've made a presentation. You've said what it was. You said you're going to make some revisions. And if we want to go mean, with that, go we ahead, can. I'll, I'll go no, I mean, I'm, Mr. Chairman, what I'm yeah. saying is they're willing to just repeat their presentation and uh, submit the revisions based on staff comments. We will circulate them, and hopefully they'll have uh, materials uh, in ample time for you to review for the meeting in two weeks. So the staff recommendation would be that you just uh, continue the pub public hearing. Uh, if there is somebody from the public here tonight, you could certainly let them speak. But just make a motion to, uh, if not, to continue it for two weeks. It, it's our plan, uh, Chairman Duran, to submit revised plans Monday or Tuesday of well, next week for said, review, wait. and we do plan on being back here at your next meeting in two weeks. So if, it, well, uh, that's, that's fine. That's hopefully we'll all have that's a great. Set of plans. Yeah, yeah. We'll have, it'll be nice and, and fresh, and there won't be any, any questions have, or anything. It's, it's, because we have been working with this for quite a while, but it. it each time you sit down and take two or three hours to go through this and understand it, and then you get another set of plans, it takes another two or three hours to go through it and understand it, and then you get another set of plans. I'm hopeful that we'll get through it in two weeks and 20 I minutes, hope, hopefully not two or three hours. I think That's it's fairly simple. Well. And, and we've come a long ways with your staff from the, from the last time you saw this, so I Absolutely. think it's going to move quickly and easily is, is my uh, my hope. If you wish, you want to sit there and go through and let all of the people hear that. Well, the Red Sox aren't playing, so I don't really have to go home, but I'm, I'm just kidding. No, we're, we've said enough, and uh, and we'll let the public okay, speak if they'd you. like to, and we'll see you in two weeks. Okay, thank you. Anyone thank on you. the public? Uh, uh, by the way, you will, do they have to sign an extension? Uh, no. To do was open a public hearing tonight, and then you have 35 days to complete it, so that you're within your time limits right. for the next meeting. All right. Okay. Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Anyone? Yes, sir. Please come forward. Again, name and address for the record. My name is Albert Irwin. I live at 1640 King Street, and my property abuts uh, Enfield Builders. And um, I have no issue, and I support the application. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, okay. That'll be part of the record, even if they do come in, because it's it'll be continued. Right. So that'll be part of the record. Yeah, well, I think I've been here. <laughs> so you asked, so I just Well, it's all up. right, but as long as you understand that if you don't happen to be here, it still, still will be it'll part of the record. Of it, yeah. Right. Okay, okay, good. Because I, my property is like um, on the southern side is 300 feet, and then the uh, western site is uh, 323. So I'm probably the, the residential property that's mostly... Uh, abunting um, Enfield Builders. So that's all I really wanted You're to say. You're the one that has a garden out on the side? The garden in the in ground swim pool? Yeah. Okay. So, is that it? Yes, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Anyone in the audience would like to, again, speak in favor or against? Last call to speak in favor or against? Motion would be in order to continue. 
Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we continue this application to our next meeting on November 2nd, uh, public hearing 2878. Second. Motion's made and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, 2883 Woodlawn Street. Secretary, please uh, read the legal notice and take the roll. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, October 19th, 2017, beginning at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2883, 3 Woodland Street, special use permit, application for a daycare in a residential R33 zone, table 4.20, use table for residential district, district, Um, Bozwan, I'm going to get screw up your name. Um, Bozwaka, um, Cruz, Czech, Kuchekski, applicant owner map, Kucharzek, applicant owner map 101, lot 81, residential R33 zone. Phew. Are you Is here? the applicant here? She's not. Hmm. Well, uh, then uh, have to I do have it. to open it, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, that'll be up to the commission uh, if you want to continue. In, uh, anyone in the audience wishes to speak in favor or against, please come forward again, name and address for the record. Nancy Middleton for Cheryl Drive. Um, in regards to this, I would, we would, um, my mother lives at five, five Woodlawn, and we would just like more information on this. Is um, is the daycare? Is there going to be um, changes to the house? Also, uh, their driveway butts up right to my mother's property, so our concern is added traffic noise well, your in the mother morning. was out there raking the lawn today pardon your mother out there raking the lawn today probably when they went by. <laughs> <laughs> right. um you know it also you know is it going to affect the property value uh, the noise level it's a quiet neighborhood um you know mostly just the traffic drop off you know early it's going to be early mornings so we would like more information what what it's going to entail and according to Connecticut law it's uh, six full-time children and three um, after school so is that I have what's no going idea. to happen I, here I, all I've seen is uh, I believe which is stated is six but I think it was just six yeah I think she had she said or at least she said in the application we can't well. answer that unless she's here so uh, I, well, if you wait a few minutes, we'll find out what the commission's going to do, because they have some options. Uh, okay. But the rest yeah, it's of it just we can't basically answer. our concern. We we just don't have any information. No, and uh, we need information from her too, which she would give. Have you been in the planning office to look at the file? I have not, because I have, I've had surgery. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> that file. It might not have all the information you need, but that's what was in our packet. So you might want to, when you feel better, you might want to pop in and look at it. And the, ap not, the application does say that there would be six kids maximum, one employee, parking would be on the street. Um, all right. Uh, Mr. Chair, is it, um, may I ask, um, Nancy about what she can hear in the property now or is that something better suited for when the applicant is here? Well, we, we'll have a discussion as soon as she's we finish with the audience and you've got to determine what you want to do with the application. 
I, well, she could ask that question, I think, right? Couldn't she? Which? She, couldn't she ask the the, the uh, neighbor what she can currently hear? How much noise is coming from there now? Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I didn't know that's what she wanted. Okay. Right, but I, I guess I'm just curious, you know, what I guess your mother can currently hear in their backyard if they're ever outside, what you can hear now versus what you might hear when there are more children. Yes, um, um, just not to sound negative, but they have not been the most courteous um, neighbors um, in the past. Um, oh, okay, um, let's not get into personalities. Yeah. Little, let's leave it at that. We we've, don't want there's been several incidences. Okay. Okay. They don't have children there now, right? Uh, no, they're uh, no, they do not, and I believe their adult children have moved, moved out. But we've had um, not a daycare. They're not. They don't have correct. it yet. Right, but we have had other incidences with them, so questions. they have not been um, courteous neighbors, and that's our concern: is uh, the the noise, um, the traffic. I don't think. They'll be courteous because they they aren't okay. right now. Yeah, be thank good. you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I guess you have a couple of choices that you can continue it. Uh, you can deny without prejudice, so she can refile. Uh, Quick. Or you you can you can look at the file and make your determination based on the file it, as, as right. well. That, I mean, that too. Uh, Roger, no. is, excuse me. Is there a reason? that she wasn't here to but we're, we are unaware of why she's not okay, here okay i thought maybe you'd she had she was some notified contact. to be here as every applicant is notified all right the uh well then the, the discussion i i went, did go out there and mm -hmm. went by several concerns they do there is a brand new stockade fence around the property so she did bring in to the office on the 16th, uh, three days ago, the affidavit so saying that she had posted the sign. Yeah, the right. sign so was... So when she was in the office three days ago, right. she would she knew that the public hearing was tonight. The sign was up. Uh, the problem is there's no place safely to drop the kids off. There were four cars in the, the uh, driveway. The, the driveway is short. So it was completely filled with cars. Uh, so if somebody came in from one direction, you'd have to let the kids off on the other side of the street or else turn around. Or you're going to let the kids off on the street and they'll have to run up the front lawn, uh, which n neither is that, that is safe. From your own uh, packet, you'll notice that it's uh, located in the basement it's a it's a nice uh, it is a nice from the photographs yeah, a, a nice arrangement she has a hatchway it's a hatchway you know, it's a hatchway the, the fire department had uh, some in, some inter, uh, concerns about that so he checked I. into it but, and uh, we did have one recently where that we turned down but she was up on the second floor I'd rather continue it um, for the reason that we don't have the ages of the six. I couldn't find it anywhere. And if they're all well, state babies regulations or infants. Required that on the, uh, right. But if she's going up the hatchway, if they can't walk up with her and she's got to carry them. That was a problem with the last That's one what I'm had. saying. Plus, um, um, we, she doesn't say if she, I know this is ridiculous, but she doesn't say whether she has a yearly or monthly drill to make sure you know how long it takes to get out like the other lady was going to do so if it's a if it's i'll go along with what everybody wants but i would prefer to continue it give her one more chance to come well but the bottom the bottom line though commissioner on this is um is it the commission's policy to allow daycare in a basement with a bulkhead exit i think that's a critical issue and if you're not I'm inclined to do that. We could continue it forever, but the applicant ought to be notified. That, that is a second safety thing that I have yeah. concerns about is the bulkhead exit or being in the basement. We well, don't allow. Yeah, that was one of my things about in the, the, basement. Yeah. the um, 
you can't sleep in the basement, you can't, you know, the, the furnace is there, you could have uh, terrible things happen that way, so it wasn't a biggie. Um, the entrance is, uh, as far as I could see, the, she had a front door and an entrance to the breezeway. And Mr. Chair, I, I share your concerns. I went out there and it's a short, it's a very short street. Mm -hmm. So it's a quick, there's not that many places to park and the driveway was full up. The sign was out, but it's, I think it might be I tough. Was, yeah, I also went out there, but the day that I went out there, there was only one car in the driveway, so I didn't see, and I think, and according to the application, there was only going to be one employee, which I'm assuming is, I don't know how to say her name. <laughs> Whatever Richard said. Um, but I understand, you know, that is kind of a short street, and but I didn't see a lot of traffic, so I was like, um, uh, okay. But then again, it wasn't at 7 o'clock in the morning when everybody's going to work. Cause All at the same time, yeah, perhaps. So, so it's a very quiet neighborhood. I could see that. So, But again, I... These are from the state regulation. It's uh, family daycare service means not more than six children, including provider's own children, not in school full time, where the children are cared for not less than three, no more than 12 hours during a 24-hour period and where care is given on a regular re reoccurring basis. Uh, that's one section. Uh, this I got last time when we had the application. The registered capacity shall be determined at the commissioner's decision taking into account the indoor and outdoor space and other accommodations available for child care at the facility and qualifications of the applicant or provider, which we don't know also. I don't know if she's operating with, uh, is she operating, or does she have state approval yet? She can't get it till we approve it. Well, I know the last one did, so that was uh, one of the problems. Yeah, but it's a new law now. Uh -huh. so, the uh, new requirements are that the uh, town must, must sign off. So there, there are other things that I didn't read. Uh, yeah. There's age requirements, certain ages, as uh, Jenny mentioned. Uh, if she has babies, she's got to have an additional, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of breakdowns. Yeah. And we don't know that. So that's a... Because it's in a basement, I'm leaning toward turning it down anyways, but... Uh, I would too. That's... Uh, so yeah. maybe it's Let's not... See what that side of the table says. <laughs> You know, my initial, you know, evaluation, I, I had the same type of thing that, it, you know, if it was in a basement, you know, th that, you know, and, it, and, you know, the only other considerations that I had, and then, unfortunately, the, the state fire marshal or the fire marshal says that after checking with the state office of early childhood licensing division, they have approved this use throughout the state that you know for uh, in a well, basement so in terms of they have approved it but so you know in in that sense i you know it it sort of says that you know the the state doesn't necessarily control that I, and i think that we as a commission would control that and you know the only other thing is that is if <laughs> if there's snow on the ground and and you know how often do, do people like shovel off their bulkheads you know and and if you do shovel off your bulkheads is there going to be a safe area to walk to you know so that you know so that, that so that you could sort of you know have some you know some um, safety for the people that are there because the other concern is is that also w with the short driveway and I was thinking again when there if we ever get a, a significant snowfall rarely you know sometimes when you're parking when you're pulling out of your driveway you can't even see you know what's coming down the road and you know especially if there's no place for the kids to access you know the house and they have to access from the road and you know there's large embankments then all of a sudden it becomes you know extra you know precarious for for people to utilize that kind of thing where you know and and you know I, and I was thinking that possibly they would have to de de designate you know some some person to go out there and actually stop traffic you know during the hours when they're receiving 
children so that you know and and you know I don't know that we can dictate that much so but you know it's it's all these little concerns that I have that that you know I was waiting to see you know what the presentation would look like and, and what everybody else's was feeling so that you know we, we could sort of discuss you know the, the possibilities without becoming you know totally negative initially but you know making trying to make an educated decision as to so why to we're doing it. Then. Well, you know, and again, I, I don't have a problem either continuing it or denying it without prejudice in terms of, you know, it's, you know, by continuing it, at, at least it gives them the opportunity to show up next time, you know, rather than reapply. Um, so, you know, I, in that sense, I'll, I'll listen to the other commissioners. I'm kind of in agreement with Rich having given them continuing so that at least we have give them the opportunity to speak there could have some something could have came up at the last minute and she couldn't have shown up so I think just giving that courtesy let her speak we might learn something more we might find out that the children are school age um, and she's just has them before they get on the bus and when they get off the bus I don't know but I think we need to let the applicant speak that's right, and opinion. if she doesn't come, then we've right. given her the the chance. Right. I agree with that as well. Well, that's why that you have in your packet from the staff two resolutions, depending upon your findings after uh, hearing from the applicant and anybody who wanted to speak and that's what your consideration was. And so we gave you one resolution that would be appropriate if you were inclined to believe that it did meet your criteria and one resolution to um, that would be appropriate if you did not believe that it met your criteria well again you, you mentioned that they have new state requirements and uh, this is Connecticut law journal 12 3008 uh, 20 Feb from 2017 this I'm sorry this one is uh, February 2017 is the regulations yeah. that I have that you got for me uh, and this is what basically to me safety should be our primary concern and that was our concern with the last application that we had on it well, just and, uh, we don't allow bedding except by the owners or anybody to sleep in a ba in a basement mm -hmm. whether it has or not right. uh, the state's laying it on us to that's right make the decision so they don't have to <laughs> well uh, I was looking for the the age limits but it, it's, it's quite a quite a long thing if she goes even for that they do have to inspect it all mm -hmm. the covers have to be on and uh, you guys want to continue okay. that's it want to continue I'm really leaning towards continuing it okay. I think uh, that uh, perhaps like she misunderstood I, don't know. I, I, I think I don't that know. it shows we're trying to work with people rather than up oh, you didn't show up that's it well, Goodbye. so that's how I feel right, so. are you hoping then that she'd move to another floor well, I mean, uh, that's what we tried with the other girl, uh, the lady, to okay. move it from the top floor to the second. Right. To Wait, see what she has to say, and then we'll go from there. And I think if we have I concerns may, other uh, than those, than just the basement thing, at least I do, yeah. with respect to the drop-off mm -hmm. um, and the noise yeah, in the well, backyard. That's what I had, is a dr there's two areas, is the drop-off and the basement. But a comment on my part yes. I believe I heard you say mr. chairman that there was a previous application that was denied on the fact that it was the basement no uh, no it was, it was on the second floor second floor which still ladders and steps okay so a similar principle applies in this case oh well yeah it was safety right and plus our safety. zoning regulations and actually, don't allow uh, sleeping your school, in the basement uh, built the requirements for a school building are for certain age levels, the, the access has to be First grade floor. level. Yep. So you have so to have a door out of the classroom on grade level. That's not even the door from in the from the corridor into the classroom. It has to be an outside door. That's on grade level. Un so understood. That holds for the schools. I don't know why it wouldn't hold for a daycare, yeah. but. That, that being the case, I just didn't see the point of the continuation then because that basic requirement appears not to be met. Well, my concern is um, 
we're here for the public and we don't know why she didn't come we can't ask her these questions maybe she'd move it to the to the first floor if if that but, well, it looks like she but has if you it all set up, if yeah. you deny it then she has to come back again and it people perceive that we're not friendly, friendly. to the public so well, when in doubt continue all right Okay, so it looks like you've got at least four of us. I think we should continue. So <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Make a motion to uh, continue public hearing 2883, mm -hmm. uh, 3 Woodlawn Street, special use permit application for daycare in a residential R33 zone. I guess that's all we need for that, right? I'll second that motion. So all motions made and seconded. All in favor? Might as well. Okay. Did you have a date, Commissioner? You were continuing it? Uh, to? Continue date two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. November 2nd. And uh, would you notify in writing? I, uh, yeah. Okay. 2885 King Street. Secretary, read the legal notice and. Uh, Not here either. Take, well, no, I still have to open it. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, October 19th, 2017, beginning at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2885, 1683 King Street, special use application for a counseling office with proposed site improvements located in the Enfield King Street Design District, Interlocking Connections, LLC, owner applicant, Map 13, Lot 28, Industrial Zone I-1, Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Um, Linda DeGray. Here. Guillermo Salazar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, and again, uh, the commissioners DeGray and Gruber will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. The applicant here. And uh, is it not? This is another uh, I will have to open to the public. Uh, it's another individual that, let's ha say, had pre plans and uh, needs to come back again with new plans. So. Well, I never had any of the site plans. To no, I'm just saying, yeah. well, that's yeah. why. We're going to need them anyway. That's so why. They had a resubmit. Right. Uh, Somehow we've got to work on these that, that we get bogged down with people that are still working on them. Uh, well, I think what happens, Mr. Chairman, on these is that um, the you need to get the legal ad 15 days ahead of time, and um, the and so you 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 legally advertise it, and then when the things go out for comment at the same time to the various departments, and the department comes back with comments. Uh, then uh, those comments have to be um, addressed. And in this instance, there were comments from the fire marshal, uh, which required them to cons considerably redesign their, uh, their, their plans. But was there no ART on this? Uh, the, the, there was m discussion over many months on this, uh, but sometimes uh, the application that comes in is not as discussed. Well, I understand that. That's what mm. I said before. For uh, that's what I, I said before. If they follow what ART tells them, they're in and out of here. But this causes us much pain, backup, and eye strain. Also, it's got to go to inland wetlands. No. Well, it may or may not. According to this. These are it improvements says it are outside the hundred foot upland right. review area. It's out outside. Therefore, it does not have to go. Should right. Should they propose new construction at a later date, they have to go. Okay. Well, we don't know what they're doing. I know it. We don't know that. So. So let me open the public, because <laughs> I know why she's here. Well, the, uh, that's a friend of hers, I think. Uh, uh, is there anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor or against this application? Just here to hear. Anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor or against the application? Anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor or against the application? 
I was out there today, and the it's it had been a welding business way back. Uh, it's been changed because I didn't recognize it. It's been painted and it's gone over, and the only thing I recognized was the barn. So. It, uh, so uh, I, I, I I don't know what what the hang, the holdup was, but so will they be ready in two weeks? Um, I I never know what to say to that because it's basically uh, well, it's uh, requires the uh, in site engineer to revise the drawings, and um, well, let's give them a so you know what happens is that. The well, is a, is a is a comment will be made that uh, you need to pave the entrance and exits, and so in this case they said, well, we'll eliminate the entrance and the exit, but then that causes other problems, and so you know. This is what happens, and I I don't know. It also could be on the commission, in which we've discussed several times, is to deny it without prejudice and let them play with it, and then come back when they're ready. Uh, but that's a decision uh, for yeah, you. But we I are getting hung up ready. with a lot of these people that aren't ready. Well, why don't you put them on the second meeting? Uh, that's what back I was. On October, back on October 12th, uh, Jen, Jennifer uh, Picacia sent the, uh, them a, um, an email saying that their, her understanding is that we would get the revised plans in time for this meeting, um, but we didn't. But then we get councilmen that have asked why it's taking so long for somebody to get somewhere. And I know, because they aren't in the packet. And the night of the meeting is not a good time to be going over plans, because you really can't do a thorough job. So but I'd like to see, and I know your hands are tied. I know that. But I'd like to see a push for either everything in or you'll get put, put on the last date meeting date that you're allowed maybe that would we've got to do something yeah um and to to that end we have a you know we have some suggestions on that later on in the meeting when we get to my report okay but on this one here um you know the i guess you need a motion to continue for two weeks you want two weeks that's up to you I was going to make four weeks. All right, you you could continue it whenever you want to. You want to continue to four weeks because you don't have the plans and they haven't been circulated. That's up to you. I. I mean, we could always go through the same thing where we give them the two weeks, and if it's ready, it's ready. If it's not, we continue. And that. I would how? deny it without prejudice. Or deny. I'm sorry. Make a motion. We deny without prejudice, and then when they are ready, to bring it forward to us. Second. Motion's on the table to deny without prejudice. That means they can come back when they're ready. Does that require a new application fee? No. Doesn't it require the state application? And it would ha also have to be um, legally advertised. We'd, we'd have to legally advertise it again, but we wouldn't advertise it until everything was ready. Okay. But would that be a break even for the department. I know that you're, you know, really um, cut to the bone. And if you're uh, re-advertising and not charging anything, are you going to be in the hole financially? I know that sounds cruel, but it's, it's well. The the the, it's the, uh, the 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 bottom line is the fees that the town presently collects from applicants don't cover the costs that are there well, that, so, that was one thing yeah, that we have so on our i mean that's that, that's that a whole other anyway. thing but uh, i mean i from an administrative standpoint i have no problem of continuing it um and, and you know rather than deny it without prejudice uh, if we continue it we don't have to re-advertise it um so i'm well, you know i'd kind of argue that you and also i think we deny it without prejudice uh no. it's sort of like are they being treated than, differently than other people on the agenda tonight? Yes. That's so true. I would say everybody should be treated the same, and I would hope that you could just continue it for two weeks, and hopefully they'll be ready. That's okay. fine. The motion's on the table. Let's. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I withdraw my motion. Okay. I withdraw my second. Okay. Then that okay. takes care of it. 
the hurry up if you're going to do it. I okay. make a motion that we continue uh, public hearing 2885, uh, 1683 King Street to November 2nd. Do we have enough time to do the second meeting in November for them? Because you're going to get all back well, up you with you, you open the public hearing tonight, and then you have 35 days to complete it. So um, So perhaps the second meeting, because we're, we're going to get all bunched up You could probably get to the second meeting, these. but I'm just saying, if they, if they do the come back meeting. and if they are ready. November 16th. I amend my motion to November 16th. Thank you. I second the motion. Thank you. OK, any discussion now? All in favor? Okay, so that carries. Done deal. Thank Till the you. 16th, Roger. <laughs> okay, uh, other business. I think that was a good compromise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's working together, we get there. Other uh, 824 referral, this is a re uh, reuse of Nathan Hale School. Right, M Mr. Chairman, I, will you. you we talked about um, trying to give some guidance to um, any potential um, reuser of the building, and um, I know that there's been some some question about what really whether it's a request for proposals or it's a request for information or it's a request for inquiries, uh, whatever it's being called. It's uh, an effort to to get interest in the reuse of the building. Um, and so um, the, uh, there was a discussion the last time about well, what might, things might be appropriate. Um, and so I, tr I went through the regulations and tried to come up with the staff cons consideration of what those kinds of things would be appropriate in an R33. Uh, we may, before the, um, the item ever comes back, uh, we may want to consider, as the commission has discussed, uh, creating a section of the regulation of adaptive reuse of public buildings in general. And it could apply to, doing, yeah, so, uh, but in the meantime, um, to um, give some guidance that you would not that anyone potentially interested in it wouldn't necessarily just be limited to your what you would commonly think of in an R33 zone. So we went down the list, and that's uh, um, for your consideration. Uh, obviously, it's a favorable report going back to the council, and uh, we staff just drafted those things that we felt may be compatible. And you know that many of them would be a special permit uh, that would be required from this commission. Uh, so the list that we suggested uh, are, of course, residential use, agricultural activities, a private or a public school, um, senior residential development, multifamily office, assisted living, continuum care communities, garden center, group child or adult daycare, housing for the elderly, funeral homes, animal hospital, commercial recreation, health club, medical office or banquet catering or conference center. So those are the kinds of things that by uh, either by right or special permit are uh, could be allowed in a residential zone. And um, so what the consideration would that we would ask the commission to do is look over that list and uh, all you're doing is making an advisory report back to the um, town council at this point, but I think it would be very helpful to uh, for anyone who comes in and wants to uh, consider doing something, if they had some sense of those things that this commission might consider later on. I have a, I had a list and basically you hit you hit all, all of them uh, except I, I had down and maybe it's just covered but I had the uh, YMCA or YWCA that type of thing because we don't have one in town we used to I think they used to use the old Hazardville yes, Inst Hazard. the Hazardville school where the daycare was right where yeah. the daycare was they were there for a while and then they opened that or they have that new one out in Ellington uh, so 
the, the, what, what what would that fall under in your regulations? Well, I, well, you have a group yeah. child or adult daycare. Uh, they would and uh, or a community center or a community care. center. <coughs> Or a commercial recreation or a health club, all of those things would be a why. So, and, might uh, might that be covered or? Yeah, I would think, and and also like a health-related occupations, so physical therapist or, or uh, related that type, you could have. That would be under medical office. Medical offices. office, right? So you, you you hit about all that I, and I don't know. It's, Anyone else have? The only one I questioned was funeral homes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I yeah, no, they, they're, yeah. Uh, I see an amendment coming. <laughs> well. <laughs> they can be in residential, if I remember correctly. They are, yeah, that's right. And But I think there's something about you can't have a crematory within so many feet of. Feet, that's changed, right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that has changed. Yeah. Uh, I was glad to see agricultural activities on the list. There's so many things that would help promote the farmer in Enfield that, you know, like uh, I remember when I was the market master at the beginning of the um, farmer's market, um, they were always looking for a place to cook, you know, to can their vegetables and to cook their pies, and they couldn't do it because there just wasn't any place in town and i would assume being a school it must have some kind of a cafeteria so i'm very happy to see agricultural activities what i brought up last time uh, the, uh, a nursing home it, it, would that fall under your your uh, senior residential or uh, medical office right well, you, well there's assisted living and there's continuing right, that's care that's all right. yeah that's right. all okay that's all part of it mm. Well, you got a pretty inclusive list. I go, I'd go, go with that. I don't see. Uh, well, you can leave nursing homes, uh, the medical office building there, if you want. The, uh, I mean, the, the funeral parlor. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like see I said, any I another one coming in. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that another one will come in, but you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So. I mean, you never know, and. <laughs> or we the say list, you Roger. can't have a funeral parlor oh. like that. Right. I don't know. Massage parlor? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> have an awful lot of area for it. No, for medical massage. <laughs> well, that would go yeah, with physical therapy and all that other. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that um, we provide an an, an A24 referral. It, it, for the former, for Five Taylor Road to former Nathan Hale School, um, in conformance with the draft re resolution dated October 19, 2017, whereas the Infield Planning and Zoning Commission has re received an 824 referral from the Town Council for the disposition of Five Taylor Road R33 zone, and whereas the town is proposing to seek proposals on the reuse of the property. And whereas the commission believes it is, it is important that potential reuses be compatible with the residential neighborhood, and whereas the commission has reviewed the uses listed below that may be compatible with the residential neighborhood, now therefore be it resolved that the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission hereby forwards a favorable recommendation to the town council for the potential reuse of the former Nathan Hale School for one or, or more of the attached use, uses. And note, that a specific reuse will have to be approved by the commission in accordance with the land use records. Resolved this 19th day of October, 2017. Second. Motion's made and seconded. I'd like to amend that with uh, 16 recommended uses on the, mo on the motion. Oh. Uh, um, I'll, and again, I, th I think that we're referring to the, you know, the uh, appropriate uses as an adaptive reuse that is included in our package prepared by the um, staff. So that, that would be 16 uses. Yeah, yeah. I think there's 17. 17. Yeah, but I took off the funeral home. Oh, well, you, well, you, didn't, you didn't Yeah, yeah no, we're saying that if, if somebody wants to put a funeral home, we're not going to, you know, limit, you know, the, well, 
the, you know, the, the it fact may that be one one of the schools you will use for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I, I think that you know if oh, if if, if if there's you know the appropriate you know possibility of it being utilized, then then schools, we shouldn't so discourage so it from being utilized. So. Right. Over brain, so, it, so I, I'll say 17 uses. Second that. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Roger, I don't know if you noticed, but I saw in the paper that they voted to purchase property on South River Road. Did we have an 824 on that? Um. Yeah, the uh, South River uh, Road um, referral um, only came over and will be on your next agenda. So they <coughs> vote prior to getting our right Uh You know, I've been around a long time. That's not unusual. All right. Um, you know, well, yeah. basically what, what happens is that um, if for some reason you sent a negative report, the vote would have had to been two-thirds. Uh, that's basically what an 824 does for the new commissioners is that um, if you send an unfavorable report, uh, then that would re the the council could still go ahead with whatever they wanted to do, but it would require a two-thirds vote. Okay. Yeah, it just changes their vote, so they they just have to re-vote on it. If they, I mean, they would, right, and if they didn't have the two-thirds vote and you gave a negative report, they'd have to re-vote it. Right, right, okay. Uh, let's see, we're down on to correspondence. Anything from the commissioners? And anything that was, I didn't see anything in the packet either, was it? Nothing from the commissioners, new commissioners? Uh, Okay, let's see, we're up to next, uh, Director of Planning, Re am I down there right? Yes. Director of Training Report. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to uh, update you on the list of uh, pending applications and what we have. Um, the list has, um, over 50 pending applications for all commissions at the present time. Uh, some that have uh, just come in is the, uh, uh, that application for wetlands came in uh, today for the uh, Metro Park North uh, expansion of two substantial buildings. Um, on King Street, um, and that's one of note, but we have a considerable uh, list of uh, pending applications. Uh, the hour being late, I won't go through them all, um, but it goes eight pages. Um, so um, they're within the last uh, week, we have finalized plans for the Olive Garden restaurant, uh, which was approved some time back. Um, the process, just for those who don't realize, um, is when this commission approves something, uh, there is still a lot to be done because in many instances, you're asking for revisions to plans, yep. and there are conditions that must be met. Um, and until those conditions are met, and the revised plans come in in a satisfactory manner and are reviewed and until they uh, post the performance bonds and in many instances uh, that takes a while and so it can take uh, uh, 30, 60, 90, 120 days after uh, an application is actually approved by the commission before it moves forward to the building uh, department um, and uh, to that end because there seems to be some misunderstanding about um, how long things take we provided you with um, uh, the statutory time limits um, in your packet tonight um, and what uh, uh, I think it's important that I go through this because um, the state statute recognizes the realities of land use applications and how long they take. And it isn't something where 
uh, somebody can walk into the office and they're all done in, in a few days. We, did, we once did process a special permit um, in like uh, maybe three weeks, uh, but that's, that's like unheard of. Um, the official, when an application is filed, the official receipt date is either the next regularly scheduled meeting of the commission or 35 days, whichever is sooner. So, um, and your guidelines provide since you, they need to be circulated to the various departments and get comments back. They have to go to health, fire, police, um, building, um, water pollution control, the water companies, um, they all have a role. And, and so in order to first review the application and, uh, uh, against uh, your uh, application checklist, so um, the earliest that, some, that an application can be on an agenda is 25 days after it's received. Um, and so um, a lot of times somebody comes in and they file it and they'd like to be on in two weeks. It's just not physically possible. Um, the, the next thing is the commission has 65 days after an official receipt date and it could be up to 100 days with extensions granted by applicants to hold a public hearing or act on the application. If you hold a public hearing, it must be completed within 35 days after it's opened. So, and then following the close of a public hearing, the commission has another 65 days to render a decision. So, um, and the applicant may grant extensions to those above time milestones up to an additional 65 days. So, the the clock on an application um, as um, provided for in the Connecticut General Statutes, uh, you could be talking eight months uh, on, um, on an application. So I think there's some misconception out there in terms of um, if uh, on, on, you know, the, the process in terms of moving something forward. If you have a situation like the uh, King Street property that's tonight, uh, that started off uh, and we had all kinds of issues that we had to deal with. Uh, we had to change the zone on one portion of the property. We had to write new regulations. And I think it's been a very cooperative um, um, partnership between the commission and the, and the applicant. So what we basically tell applicants is each application is unique. And once it's rece received, we will do our best to provide an applicant a time schedule and that time schedule is dependent upon whether you need to go to an administrative review team meeting, whether you're going to need a public hearing, and whether you have to go to one or more commissions. Um, under the current uh, regulations, for example, um, the woman who was here tonight as part of the uh, King Street application for the automobile use, the use uh, in that zone requires a special permit from this commission. So she has to come here first, and you have to say, yeah, that's an appropriate use. And then the Connecticut General, uh, General Assembly and in its in infinite wisdom last year um, included a section in the, in the budget implementer bill that said that the Zoning Board of Appeals then has to grant a location approval so um, they, they, they applied to both P and Z and ZBA at the same time. And at a staff level, we had to indicate to them that they couldn't apply to ZBA because they didn't have the right to apply to ZBA because you hadn't, this commission hadn't given them that right. If they wanted to go to ZBA, they would have to go to ZBA and apply for a variance uh, that would allow uh, that automobile use in that zone. That's the only way they could avoid coming here first. So um, it's uh, the rules and regulations that we operate under are, are very much mandated by the Connecticut General Statutes. Um, 
and um, in terms of time frames, um, you know that that's what that's what we're, we're dealing with. So you may have app in in the town of Enfield. Many many of the applications must go to Wellens first. Um, so uh, if an application comes in and it has to go to inland wetlands, then it's got to go to planning and zoning, and then it has to go to zoning board of appeals. Then you you take the the time frame on here and you multiply times three. So another one too that uh, is advisory that uh, we have to wait for though. Uh, and then if it's referred to the um, to your advisory commissions and uh, sometimes um, and and then you have applications that are also within the historic district commissions purview. Um, so they would. They would also have to look at it. So, so that's just um, another thing. But if you if you go down through the reasons why applications take a long time, um, and I say this to applicants every day, the amount of time it's going to take to get you an approval depends upon your uh, design team and the amount of time it takes for them to get the commission what they need. Um, and you, you just take Olive Garden. You approved Olive Garden back in July. Um, right. They took from July until uh, two days ago to meet your conditions of approval. Um, and n you know now they're ready to go. But it took us, it took them even, I don't know how, I forget how long it took them to even get back to us in the first right. place. Right. Uh, remember, back. because you were, um, they were before this commission and you asked them, um, the, they wanted to light up the roof. And you said, well, what is the, what is the photometric on that? Where's that light going to go? Is it going to be intrusive into neighborhoods? And you also asked them what the, uh, the, the brick material was on the tower. And to get the brick material samples and the photometrics, they took three months. Yep. Um, so, um, so that you know that's that's important. But the good news is you have eight pages of applications of things that folks want to do in this town. Uh, Roger, so on those eight, please before I put them on the list, make sure they're ready to go. Right and. and and so, um, the so from a staff standpoint, we're sort of whipsawed sometimes because we get hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. We got to get this stuff before the commission, and then when it comes before the commission and it doesn't pass muster, uh, we get from the commissions. Well, what's that doing here? That shouldn't have been here so soon. So I just. All I'm saying is that um, it's a delicate balancing act, um, and we do our best every day to, you know, make decisions. Is it ready to to be advertised or not? And I think the 15-day window of where we have to advertise and we have to have that ad written sooner than 15 days. Uh, uh, so, I mean, we're talking, we're making decisions about whether something's going to be ready three weeks ahead of time. Right. And sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Uh, so I just wanted to, 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 to in indicate that to you. And then um, the second thing is, um, the uh, a review of a building permit. I provided you in your packet tonight what a what a review of a building permit takes because sometimes we hear like, oh, there's a building permit pending and planning hasn't signed off on it. So when a building permit comes in, um, the it is re it's necessary to review all of the prior approvals on that project, which may be inland wetlands, it, that may be from three, four years ago, from planning and zoning, the conditions of approval, uh, from, from zoning board of appeals. And so um, that requires looking up files, sometimes getting files out of the archives. Uh, there's a lot involved. It's not a question of saying, yeah, it, it's uh, 10 feet from the side yard and it's 22 feet high. So um, that's an important thing. And any, 
at the present time, there are about 50 building permits uh, that are pending that staff will, you know, needs to review. Uh, so we have this list here, which is over 50 items that are formal applications. We have about 50 building permits that we review on any given time frame that sort of revolve. And then you have the uh, zoning enforcement itself, which is about 50 cases. Uh, then we have code enforcement, which is about 50 cases. We have about 35 people who walk into the office on a given day uh, and ask questions uh, that requires us to answer. And then we have what's called the universal spreadsheet, which anybody comes in and just wants to know, you know, what's the side yard in my backyard and how, you know, what have you. Uh, that requires research and sending them a letter. So on any given day, if you call up the planning office, uh, there's probably 200 or 250 things that somebody could ask us about. And um, I think all in all, the staff does an outstanding job of moving them, them forward. Um, and so, you know, that, that was, you know, what I just wanted to uh, bring to your to your attention. Thank you. Uh, so item 13, authorization, administrative approval. Uh, Weymouth Road, a 36 unit. Where does he want to put this? Um, he originally wanted to put it in the front, and we uh, there's a picture there in the report from Rick Rochelle. Uh, he would go on the side. Right, the, the, the picture shows a. Uh, the picture shows a um, ice um, an ice cool an ice chest there as well. In the moment, the ice chest would be relocated and it would be on the side with bollards around it. And this ice chest is on the back of the building. Oh, it's on the side. Well, it wasn't when I was out there today. Well, maybe they've moved it already. Was Rick told them they were going to have to move that? Yeah, they put it out back. And that out back, I don't know what the odor was. Is there a grease trap back there or something? I don't know, sir. There's a barrel. There's a, 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 what are they, 50-gallon drum mm -hmm. barrel out there and a lot of spilled material. Now, he, that used to also have a gas station, which apparently they closed. Uh, but he's also got his uh, three light stanchions, and the lights are gone. Uh, is this, I, I don't know if they were ever removed officially. Is that a corner of Weymouth and Steel? It's a car on the corner of Weymouth and Steel, uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Isn't he, he's a convenience store, right? Right, mm. right. I, uh, they they had it. They did have originally gasoline too up there. Well, that was long well, way back, I, as far as I can remember. There's also he's got two uncovered dumpsters that face. Uh, they're facing the school. Uh, uh, what's his name of the Porter, Porter Chester. Chester? And it's funny because they're inside. I think in back of it there's a caged. It looked like, because I get out of the car and it's overgrown with a lot of bushes and stuff, and you can't see through it, but I think it's an old dumpster enclosure. And instead of using it, because it was too small, he let these vines grow all over it. But those dumpsters should be enclosed. Uh, the school shouldn't have to look at it or whoever else is occupied in that building in back of them. So I have uh, make sure the lights are on. Well, um, I don't know. Right, the but are but, gone but, but resolve the issue of the lighting of the parking lot. Well, yeah, but yeah. I don't know if they were supposed to be removed. All I see is, and I hope for they're dead, but I, I don't know. They're just the wire sticking up through the cement stanchions. If they're going to put the um, cage with the bollards in the back, is it going to be? on the parking lot my understanding of it it's on the side and it's on going to side. be on that the same when you look in the picture and you see the ice yeah. chest it was going to be on that the with bollards in are, front the two sides are open mm. the back there is a cage there because he's got his air conditioner mm. and a whole bunch of trash inside there um, you like the site cleaned up and the dumpsters oh, put where it up. is yep oh that's
that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, the site should be, but I, I, you know, if they've taken the stanchions and it's supposed to be lit, uh, it would be nice if the cement, whatever you call them, were removed and the and the wires pulled or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I don't know the safety on those <coughs> things. Maybe they're disconnected inside, but I... That's probably where they had their gas prices. No, these are out by the entrances. Oh. The entrance on... Uh, Maybe there were sign lights or Weymouth something. Road and the entrance, the other entrance. He's got two <coughs> entrances. And they're, they're, the stanchions are still there with the wire sticking up, but there's no poles and no nothing else. And then there's uh, another cement stanchion there on uh, Weymouth Road that probably held the gas station sign because it's a round <laughs> thing and diff a little different. But I don't know why those can't be removed if they're not going to be there. Maybe it's not his property. Well, it may not be. I don't know. I don't know if it's a chain. I, I just, whoever it is. Excuse me. And if the plans showed the lights and the lights were removed without, we should at least amend the plans. But the dumpsters, I think, should be enclosed. Roger, does he, when you approve it, when you do an agent approval, do you have the applicant physically fill out an application for you? Oh, yeah, they, they fill out a regular application, uh, it, just as if it was going to come to you. Okay. Uh, the only thing is the fee is less, and, um, um, you know, we're, we're it's it's a mid midpoint we're trying to use to where things don't necessarily would require a full blown application and a appearance before the commission and so forth and in this instance uh, it, you know uh, it it shows the system's working because you folks went out there and looked at it and you have some suggestions and we'll make sure those are taken That's care why of. An application is that good to have for the history. And it looks like a spilled grease and there's a grease trap there. I don't know. Yeah. So why don't you let me prepare a report for you on okay. what the results of all those things are, and, and uh, um, we'll go from there. The others? Do we, do we need a motion for that? Yeah, yeah. Well, do you want to do all three? Uh, how about, what's the a, what's a 130 Elm Street? That's 130 the, Elm Street is um, a um, request for T-Mobile to locate in the Freshwater um, <coughs> State Line Plaza. Um, again, it's a it's a uh, existing shopping center. They're not making any changes. It's just a new tenant going into a storefront. How about 54 Hazard Avenue? And 54 Hazard Avenue is the exact same thing. So a motion we could include all three, uh, which would be that uh, were the appropriate uh, other agencies involved. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we authorize administrative approvals for site plan review 1725 138 Weymouth Road and that would also include you know our discussion regarding you know investigating the light co the light post bases and the electrical uh, things that are sticking out of there the enclosures for the dumpsters and the site be cleaned up a little bit so that it's in conformance with our regulations and and also the fact that the site plan review 1728 elm street and site plan review 1729 54 hazard avenue for sprint and, and t-mobile um, facilities to be located within those shopping plazas and that everything be in conformance with the uh, approvals of the appropriate departments second one was 1726. Motions made in second. Oh, I'm um, 1726, if I screw that up. Second. Motions made and seconded. Any discussion? Just add maybe the health department, because I don't know what the smell, the, if it was grease or what. Maybe, maybe it's nothing. Hmm. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, next is... On the applications to be received, uh, we tentatively indicated to uh, 95 Elm Street and 91 Simon Road that the earliest they would be on the commission's agenda would be your second meeting in November. Um, 
Which one of those? Those. That's the uh, freestanding tenant sign on um, on uh, Coles and the um, Simon Road subdivision. Still a lot of work to be done on cir circulating those plans and getting comments back. And uh, um, with respect to 95 Elm Street, they're still looking into whether they can provide a second sign yeah, to a help idea. identify the uh, medical buildings in the back. Yeah. And don't forget the daycare. And the daycare. Or, uh, so uh, they're, they're, they're being received tonight, but I'm not asking the commission to schedule them at all. I don't believe that they're ready at this time, point about, in time. Uh, and uh, 188 Moody Road, we looked at those plans, and those plans are not ready either. Um, so I don't think that needs to be scheduled at this time. Um, and the New, Eng New England Urgent Care Center, this is another urgent care center, wow. not the one that we already approved. So this would be the third urgent care center. Um, so one is called urgent care, the other is called urgent care, and this will be New England Urgent Care. The Isn't there one already over um, in that little plaza that they have all kinds of trouble getting so, the uh, fire um, engines in? It's not that one? No, it no, is that one. Street. So th this is, uh, this one is going into, the, 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 the there is a little plaza there and there was a medical office down the other end like and, huh? Next to Napa. Um, and uh, then we have uh, an application that can't be scheduled right away, which is the um, the applicant petition for a zone text change to add a new section to the regulations. Uh, this has uh, been sent out to the Capital Region Council of Governments for comment, and we. We can't schedule that for a, for a uh, hearing until such time as they come back on it. So um, none of these items would be um, would be coming up at your next meeting. Um, if we're good on that, under um, good. resolved issues, um, the. Um, I talked to the chairman about an, an item. Uh, Roger, so any of these uh, 17, 27, and 28 are also no go? They're not they're ready? Not, not at this time, no. All right, so we don't. So basically, them. what we're trying to do is address the issues, Thank which goodness. is you had, which we're alerting you they exist, okay. uh, and we're going to try to get them in better shape before they. Appear, I mean, appear in your, in your reports. We we're not trying to hold them up, but we're just trying to say if you want to be in and out in one meeting. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, 472 Taylor Road, the Shaker Heights um, uh, subdivision, uh, it was originally five parts. It's now two. Uh, half of the lots were already built, the other half are you approved? It's roughly 38, 39 lots. Um, the conditions of approval you put on it was a special permit had to be filed on the land records within 90 days. Um, they, they're running up against that clock, which runs out actually tomorrow. Um, and uh, they do not have their, their bonds posted. Uh, they sent us an email saying that they wanted to, and I also talked to the gentleman on the phone, uh, that they they believe they'll need till next Tuesday to um, file the, uh, to post the performance bonds. There's three of them. Um, they're in the neighborhood of a half million dollars, uh, the bonds that are required to be posted. Um, and uh, so we discussed it and um, one of the, the suggestion that I have um, is that uh, we allow them to file the special permit document tomorrow on the land records um, and so they would meet their requirement of filing it, but they wouldn't get any permits until they posted the performance bonds. Um, 
uh, te the technically, you could look at, at your conditions of approval and say that they would have to come back here and apply for an amendment to extend the time. Um, I think really it's one of those areas where um, there's we are we're accomplishing the spirit of what your conditions of approval said, but it's definitely your your call. Yeah. My suggestion to him, and I would go along with allowing allowing because it is quite a development, and he's trying to get his money together. Is allowing him to. Uh, sign uh, well the the special permit uh, that is in order in and, and when uh, the secretary was in a few days ago he signed it but we're holding it when we weren't letting him file it until he put, posted his performance bonds however he's now saying he can't post them until Tuesday and we have a correspondence from the his um, his insurance broker that says they expect them on Tuesday but so um, it's really if he doesn't file that on uh, on the land records tomorrow then technically he would need to apply all over again for his uh, 39 lot approval so what, um, I, what I say is let him let him file it let him file it, and then don't give him the permits until he, d he does. I understand that. What I was shaking my head, no, I was just meaning that he could have written a note to the, to the members tonight saying exactly what Roger did and asking for an extension because it's been done before with large subdivisions. It, usually it was the mylars that weren't filed. I've never heard of the bonds, but usually uh, it's mylars. I haven't heard, ever heard a request either. I think it was but handled elsewhere. In the past. Well, he, he made the request within the last two days, I yeah. believe. Roger there Cole there has been a lot of con there's been a lot of conversation uh, with uh, with everybody about how did the Secretary bonds get estimated. He wanted to come. He wanted to come to this commission at one point and argue that the bonds were too high. Um, I consulted with the chair, and the chair said, in the history of the, he's been here, the commission has already relied upon the uh, the town engineer, the town planner, and the director of finance on setting bond amounts, and so. Um, We've never done a fear. And so the question really is, um, it's a no harm, no foul, but I, I don't want to. You know, I can't do it on my own because I'm out there hanging with somebody saying, "How, how did we, how did we allow this to happen?" So I guess you could say and I didn't he he su <laughs> he submitted an he submitted a request to me as your age as you know the the administrative agent for this commission. So you can say he has a request, but then you get into the question of. Well, are you changing the but conditions of approval? But on the other hand is, you know, we're talking about three days. Um, and what we actually have done, the commission has done, is they've gone from restricting it to 90 days to saying filing in 120, because we're finding a lot of people are not, are just not being able to get all of their post Quick application question. work done. If he doesn't file Tuesday, how much more time will you give him? No, I mean, saying, uh, well. The bonds, the bonds. Well, the thing is, he will never ever get a permit if he doesn't post those he'll performance bonds. He'll pull a building bonds. permit. Hmm? He'll, bill, he'll, pull, if, he'll pull a building permit. No, he can't because we won't sign it. I, <laughs> he can apply, but we won't sign it. And if you look at what's in front of you tonight, that the planning office has to sign off on all building permits. So what do you want to do? Mr. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we allow the filing of the plans uh, um, as indicated tomorrow, but that we do not sign off on the uh, filed plans until the bonds are posted. Second that. Motion's made seconded. Now discussion. Okay, all in favor? Good, it's unanimous. Thank you, the second item is uh, USA hauling um, on uh, Mullen, Mullen Road. Um, this is the solar panel uh, group. 
Uh, well, uh, they, you remember you approved solar panels and there was a discussion about the trees and as part of the approval you wanted uh, larger trees and you specified a minimum caliber of five to five and a half inch trees and they requested of me to reduce it to four, four to four and a half inch caliber trees because they said five or five and a half inch were not available. Uh, we asked uh, staff to make calls to some local nurseries. We found out they are available, uh, five and five and a half inch thing, and so we advised them of that. Um, and we also advised them that uh, if the growing season is a problem, they do have a performance bond in place and uh, they could plant the trees in the spring. Uh, so I just reporting that out um, that um, I, staff could not find any reason to say you couldn't put five and a half inch caliber trees in. Good, thank you. Um, those are the two um, extraneous um, items that I, that I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, any unresolved issues? We got a lot. Uh, are you still working on the uh, fees? Um, Ricardo Casio uh, put together a whole um, packet of information for me. Uh, made phone calls to uh, I don't know, maybe 15 towns that are similar size. We have all of their. Uh, fee information, uh, we just haven't had a spare moment to put it in a, um, a document that's understandable uh, to all of us so that we can get it to you. But okay. it's it's uh, in the works, the research has been done, we got to put it in, put it in a, and put it in a format for you and I guess the process is, is you, rec you would adopt them and recommend them to the town council and the town council will have to yes. amend them. I can tell you that the Enfield fees are, um, would you say they're, they're on the lower side? They're definitely on the lower side. Okay. Particularly our $5 fee for a home occupation. Yeah. <laughs> Used to be 65 That was when they paid the state. Now it's 5 so they don't have to pay the state. Uh, I'd like some advice from the commission on the uh, the Simon Road public hearing 2879 when that comes in uh, I would suggest we take that as a separate item on one hearing uh, unless you want to do it otherwise uh, we got a lot of stuff to review on it so yeah you will so yeah and the Commission has already asked uh, for um, a lot of the information that went uh, through the Wetlands Commission the last time there were uh, outside environmental reports um, that were done um, on the uh, on the application and uh, so there's a lot of that information that we have to go through there's probably seven seven boxes of material on uh, prior application and uh, yes. so it's important that uh, uh, and as many new members on this commission who weren't here at the last time that it went through. This is, by the way, for the new, the new people on the, st on the staff and on the commission. Uh, this is referred back to us by the court. There's, there, uh, there, there, this was turned down by this commission and the, um, there, there, um, it was sent back to the uh, to the commission to rehear because the judge found that um, the procedures um, and the process that the uh, commission used in adopting it were not satisfactory. Right. And yeah, let the, it go so that. Part of that question is uh, it's a separate hearing by itself, and we could do it on a regular meeting night or a, a special meeting night. That's uh, entirely up to you. It should be a regular meeting. Regular night. meeting night, okay. Yeah. So keep that in mind when we're doing other things, please. Um, I, I just like to add that if there's anything that's really pending that needs to be addressed, that you know possibly we can sort of 
include that, but include that as as the the initial review, so well, that you know. Well, we did that for the other, like right. we've done yeah. that before. And put it up in the front. Right. The yeah. Side. And so so then Simon Road would would sort of you know then take the remainder of the meeting. So you know. But not too many of them. Right. No, Simon not too many. Is, but but you know just to, just to keep things going and just to keep you know everybody in line because. You know, it, it more likely than not will be continued, and then all of a sudden you were bumping more people and That's bumping more people. So, Absolutely. so I think that in in that vein, we we would consider possibly you know okay. including other items. Uh, the uh, the final item is uh, is, a is, um, is a housekeeping detail. Uh, the last full time zoning enforcement officer was Commissioner Higley, who retired in uh, February of 2016. Um, I have been the um, you appointed me as assistant zoning enforcement officer uh, prior to her retirement, and uh, so I've been assistant to a vacancy, and then. Uh, Rick Rochelle um, has been um, assisting, but he's not authorized to sign his own name. And so when he signs, he signs Roger O'Brien and puts and puts Rick Rochelle on there, which is um, you know I authorize him to to sign. So what we'd like to do the responsibilities are full time, and so what we've suggested to you is that. You up me from assistant to Z to zoning enforcement officer. Rick is only part time, and you make Rick the uh, an, a part time assistant zoning enforcement officer. That that means you have two people who can who can sign. And um, while we gave you the duties of a zoning enforcement officer, was just so you'd understand that it's it's not the 50 cases that it's enforcement, which most people believe is a tremendous amount of work. Um, in terms of, and a lot of it is uh, reviewing um, the, the building permit uh, on a regular basis, which is important that we be able to do that on a timely basis. Are you going to be able to do that, Roger? I know how swamped you are. Well, the thing is, I'm doing it. I've been doing it He's now. Been doing it. I've been doing it. Rich to I've, I've been doing it. Rick assist, and so, like for example. Tonight, sitting between five and seven, I reviewed and signed off on 15 building permits. Uh, so every day, I'm either reviewing them and 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 doing them, or Rick is doing it. So this is there's nothing nothing changes here other than instead of having a vacancy, because every time we go to court uh, and we've got two or three court cases, it's like um, if. Uh, if Rick has done some of the legwork in terms of gone out and doing the review and so forth, I'm actually the only signatory at the present time for the town, and so then I have to, you know, I also have to review that and so forth. And then what's happening is when we sign, when we send out notices of violation or cease and desist, we both sign them. Uh, he signs them as code enforcement, I sign them as zoning enforcement. So um, I view it as um, as um, housekeeping, um, and it's obviously at your pleasure. It's uh, in other words, it would allow Rich to sign it himself and be legal. He he just passed well, the courses. No, if we need to appoint Rick so he can sign. Right. It. Roger is asking that we put he Roger he here and, and leave Rich there. And you there. got two. No. no. Well, because it's a it's a full time responsibility. So Rick works nineteen hours, and so the other eleven hours, if he's not here, nothing then gets signed. You'll never get a full time zoning enforcement officer. Huh? You will never get a full time zoning enforcement officer. Well, at least we have a half time. Well, I was the assistant planner, and I was a zoning enforcement right officer. On. So maybe one of them could do it. Well, that's what the resolution in front of you says, Commissioner. I read it, it said you. Right. right. Yeah. And instead of assistant planner and ZEO, it's planner and ZEO. Right. Exact my same thing. Right. My concern has nothing to do with your qualifications. My concern is your time frame. You are always running to catch up. And I know that you're doing it now, but if you're. Everybody, everybody in our office is running to catch up. I, I understand that. I'm just saying that you're taking on more responsibilities. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm not doing anything different at all. 
I mean, Ooh, in theory, if you wanted to make Rick zoning enforcement officer and me assistant, I, it doesn't matter. But Rick and I discussed it, and it makes more sense logistically since he's only 19 hours. That's all. Well, it, it, this is a step towards at least having a system and having two people. Rich, Rich right now can't sign anything unless you make him an officer. I mean, you got to do something with him. He's got the, the qualifications now. So. Well, is the is the idea that we're actively looking, or is it? No, we uh, aren't. Uh, not looking, we just it. need help, right. and he's he can do it. But you got to name him. We we just got to point the right people to the right, you know, yes. office so that they're capable of of actually signing their their name to something and it actually. It has some yeah. meaning to it rather than yes. being an empty signature. And Rick worked very hard to get his, you know, his case study sure, done. Sure, yes, he does. And so I would hate to not appoint him officially. No reflection on you. I know you have way more experience. So the you uh, hard on it. Uh, two motions: one to make uh, Roger uh, the zoning the zoning enforcement officer. And the other to make Rich Roselli the. You can do it. Do it any way you want. The well, motion in front of you is, okay, it takes care of both of them at the same time. All right. Well, then. In, in that vein, I'll make a, a motion um, for the appointment of a zoning officer and assistant zoning enforcement officer. Um, whereas the Infill Planning Zoning Commission has, is charged with appointing zoning enforcement officers under Section. 12.20 of the infill zoning regulations and whereas zoning enforcement is a full-time responsibility and the director of planning is a full-time position and whereas Roger J. O'Brien the director of planning was appointed in early 2016 as the assistant zoning enforcement officer and whereas Ricardo Rochelle code enforcement officer works part-time and insists with zoning enforcement and whereas the planning and zoning commission wants to provide for efficient and effective administration and enforcement of the zoning regulations now therefore be it resolved that the infield planning and zoning commission hereby appoints roger j o'brien the director of planner as zoning enforcement officer and ricardo rochelle a zoning enforcement officer as the assistant zoning enforcement officer effective this 19th day of october 2017 and there are some resumes and qualifications attached second motion is made second and now discussion okay hearing none all in favor oh. no. one one two three four I'm against. and you i'll be against you are mm -hmm. yeah all right Rick, Rick be on time. it's, it's paid yeah. it's passed yeah. Thank so you. be it. Okay. I'll have to start paying your bills. Well, the, the only thing that I we should add is that it had to be a full time position, so that and Rick is not full time, so that you know we, we couldn't go any other direction. I guess they should be paying their bills instead of running on a credit card all the time. What are you talking about? The council. This is not anything to do with the council. Yeah, it is. They don't want to pay for the position. Anything else? Um, well, you've got 19 <laughs> hours. And then I make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All, all in favor, we stand adjourned.